The fire of providence is in our hands. The great destiny of humanity lays before us if we only take it in our hands. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the 21st day of November 2016. We're going to be here for the next four hours. And this is one of those opportunities sometimes when I have the rare instance of being someone under the weather, kind of like a sinus infection or something. I haven't even gotten around to pumping colloidal silver through my neti pot yet. It just hit me like over the weekend, and I kind of ignored it till this morning. But when I am a little bit under the weather sometimes, it kind of takes the edge off, and that's when I have my better broadcast because it's just I've seen to be more calm. And we're going to break down just incredibly important information as we do every day here, but there's just a lot of developments unfolding that really crystallize exactly where we are historically. The president, every day now, comes out at press conferences in Greece, in Germany, in Latin America, in his latest speech, and badmouths while he's down in Peru, fake news. Now, have you ever wondered how they would come after free speech? Well, they call it conspiracy theory. We've got to shut off conspiracy theorists, but that's been so overused now, they now are calling it fake news. And there's a total war. I mean, I clearly saw them when they lost the election. Three, four days went by, and then all of a sudden, boom, fake news. That's the new agenda. And the, the president almost every day, fake news, fake news, fake news, the last 10 days. So that's where they're going. That's their entire system. That's what they are promoting. And it just shows how incredibly desperate they are, but it also shows these people are real authoritarians. And they mean business to shut us down. Because we're kicking their butts up and down the block. And we better be kicking their butts. These are horrible, evil, degenerate authoritarians who can only get away with this if the public's not paying attention. But let me tell you something. Their constituents even though they don't really even get anything from the system, think they're part of it with reflected glory and are crazed. Like red-eyed weasels trying to just bring the country down. They have true enmity towards their fellow humans. They, they have serious class envy. And I mean, the richest ones do. They don't want anybody having wealth but them. It is a motley crew of just despicable degenerates that call us despicable. Now, we have Marine Le Pen, who is set to win the presidency over in France. She's way ahead in the polls, they'll try to steal it. You've got Merkel's almost lost control of the, the Bundestag, the Reichstag, the upper and lower houses, and she's still, they're trying to foist her and force her on everyone. This is all what the technocrats basically have in mind for us. But the good news is, from France to Spain to Russia to the UK, the United States, and all over the world, people now get it. They understand global government. They understand the corporations are tax exempt and are making deals with politicians about where the jobs go and where the industry goes, playing God. Oh, China, you'll get all the rare earth minerals. Okay, under secret treaty, we just, we don't get them. That's now come out. I mean, China now, in global government, is dictating, shut off your fake news, shut off your, 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 your nationalist. We have the, the Chinese government in, in the newspapers telling us what to do with the president Yes, sir, boss, saying the same thing. I mean, this is surreal. But their weakness is forcing them to come out in the open, which is our final victory. We've got other incredible news that ties into all of this straight ahead. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we are broadcasting worldwide on this Monday global transmission. 21st day of November 2016. We will soon enter 2017 and the rebirth of the Republic 
or another stage in the tectonic battle to restore the republic. I want everybody just to pull back because I'm doing this myself and just assess how far we've come, how many people are aware of globalism, the corporatocracy, the kleptocracy, how crony capitalism works, how it's designed to siphon off productivity, consolidate control, and vertically integrate civilization in an anti-human direction. We have come so far, and when I say I want to thank the audience, when I say I want to thank the crew, I don't want to just throw that out there like, oh, thank you, thank you. I mean, I mean it. It is, it is mind-blowing to go out on the streets of Texas and, and the rest of the country, for that matter, and to go to third world countries as well, and Europe, and to be mobbed by info warriors. And, and I mean mobbed now. And it, it's not about bragging. You aren't a public figure, 99.9% .9 of you. So you don't experience the fact that, I keep telling everybody, folks, InfoWars is only one part of the liberty movement and the global awakening, and we're 120-something on Quantcast and all the other big systems. Google says we're even higher. We have the internal stats. It shows Drudge is even higher, you know, like 70-something, and we're like 115 um, we could actually do a piece, show people Google Analytics and what it tells us, but there's contracts. You're not supposed to show a lot of it because you got to subscribe to it. I mean, I pay a ton of money just to be able to see this stuff. And the Quantcast stuff's public, but what I'm getting at here is, folks, that's bigger than the Wall Street Journal, bigger than the New York Times, bigger than BBC. BBC stopped all its global broadcasting, you know, uh, worldwide. All, all they do is Internet. We're beating the BBC that everyone in the UK has a frickin' tax on their TV. They get billions of dollars, billions of dollars a year. I think it's over a billion pounds a year is their budget. Let's look it up. I, I'm going from memory. And we're kicking their ass with $50 million a year. And, and, I, and I love folks when they go, Alex Jones just said he made $50 million a year. No, that's what it takes to run this place. $50 million a year. I mean, a medium-sized newspaper costs that to run a year. It's expensive. Like I said, if we weren't in Texas, we couldn't do any of this. We the taxes in New York and things. I didn't buy the mansion and the helicopter or the jet. I, I built this because I knew we have a responsibility to take these globalists on. I don't want to do this. Quite frankly, I'm not a um, person that, that was actually out looking to be somebody in the world. I just saw people trying to take my rights, just like you did. And, and that's the problem, is that inherently, we have our family, we have our friends, we are private people. The, the higher your IQ, it's just known, the more private you are. And we're not looking to dominate people. Hell, we, we, we want to run our own lives. I don't look over my neighbor's fence. But the people that do want to run our lives are obsessed with it. And you ask, well, then why, if they're lesser people, are they in control? Because good men and women do not desire the power. And so we have just handed over, abdicated, our authority to these people. And they are absolutely... feverish with their desire to program our lives. And so everything InfoWars has done is a repudiation of that. And I'm trying to teach people how powerful they are. You are powerful. That's not some self-help BS. That's real. And it's like Matt Drudge has been telling people for 15 years, one of his biggest... Uh, ongoing statements is telling media, independent new media, you're just as important as the New York Times. Well, I think you're more important. I mean, if you're out there and you videotape a plane crashing or you videotape a flood or somebody saving a little kid, you know, out of a ditch when, you know, or whatever, that's the big viral video. That's, that's you. That's real. You showed it. There, there, there's no editorializing. It's just there. And it's the same thing with Hillary stumbling around like she's about to die, disappears into a hospital for a year. The Secret Service tells us she's having seizures all the time. And then it gets caught on tape.
And that's why the credibility goes up and up and up because mainstream media is trying to lie to you. It's so much easier just to tell the truth. But I've also made the point many times that we have to be ready to be winners. So when I come on air and I tell you that now, anywhere I go, every other person's a listener. I mean, I can't go out in public now. People want to take pictures, everything else, and they, they're really listening. It, it's crazy. And again, if Liberty's that popular, just, as, just with InfoWars' little focal point, imagine how big it is around the world. And we've got Marie Le Pen um, way up in the polls. So she, she'd win the election, basically, if it was held now. In France, she's a libertarian patriot, nationalist. And she's not even as hardcore as Ron Paul. So the French call her racist. And it's just standard crap. It's not her fault she's got blonde hair. And no, not her fault. Her dad was a war hero, paratrooper, a nationalist who warned about the Islamification and all the rest of it. And he almost won the presidency. The point is, is that give me this woman any day. I could care less whether she's a woman or a man. Just, just give me somebody that isn't out to get the nation state. So there's a lot to cover, a lot to go over. Uh, it, it, it is really a big deal that Obama, in every foreign country he visits, whether it's Greece or Germany or Peru, there's a new one today I'm going to play here in a moment, says we got to deal with fake news. And people say, what's fake news? Oh, that's defined. Like alt-right is anybody that disagrees with Hillary now or the government. It's just, we're the alt-right, you're the alt-right, the alt-right, not the new media, not that there's been a huge populist awakening. No, no, you're the, the, you're the racist alt-right, because God forbid we don't want Latin America and Africa and Asia picking up on all this. Oh no, you can't have national sovereignty in your own local jobs and a livable wage unless it's through the Democratic Party. No, no, it's racist. Yes, yes. Owning guns is racist. Did you, did you know that? You can't have you can't have the Tea Party. It's not for you. You're you have brown skin. You just can't have that. It's not for you. Just go away. That's that's white people stuff. <laughs> it's like the big houses and the bank accounts and the rule of law and the civilization. You, you don't you don't you don't get cars. You don't get no no no. You don't get air conditioning. No 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 no. But that's not racist at all. You get foreign insurance companies running your government, doubling and tripling your prices. How's that sound? How's that for a right? You like that free goodie you got? You like getting cut from full-time to part-time? Yeah, we're going to take good care of you. Just the avarice of these assholes. And I'm sorry to talk like that, but that's who they are, man. They're bad people that just get off on screwing people. That's their fundamental drive state. So here's the big news flash. I've got a theme today in the stacks of news that we didn't look for this theme, it's just there. Leftist spray painting swastikas saying they got raped by Trump supporters, all this made up crap where oh, there's this epidemic of Klansmen riding around attacking everyone. I mean, give me a break, folks. The KKK was a joke 50 years ago. I mean, it, you'd, you'd think there's guys in white sheets hiding under everywhere. It is so, I'm gonna skip this network break. This is such a load of crap. And it's just everywhere that you're supposed to signal you were victimized like a baby. And then you supposedly get something from that. But you don't. You're just some cog that, that, that just puts out the announcement, I'm a victim. I don't have a white male around me. I'm all alone. The state's my husband. Make life better for me. These people are out trying to create wounds that don't exist. If you had real wounds, you'd know those wounds were your strength. Embrace your wounds. They make you who you are, not... Not some pathetic loser. And I really saw the hoax this weekend when I was out, you know, in Central Texas, out in Lockhart, and I went to this barbecue place that's famous, and there was just black people, white people, Hispanic folks everywhere, working there behind the counter, cutting the food up, all getting along, all coming together. Just just total it's been like that for a hundred years. 
And it's again, everything you're taught about the South, or everything you're taught about, all of our history is like some little distorted pixel they, they zoom in on and just, oh, look at that. The truth is everybody's been getting along and intermarrying basically forever. Are there always uppity people that get in folks' faces and are elitist? Absolutely. But the, but the issue is, is that the globalists are the predators that have hijacked our nation. They're the ones that have come in and taken over. They're the ones that really have bad will. Like Jesse James was here. I've known him for years and really nice, smart guy. And our, our daughters are best friends. Been friends for like four or five years. But he goes, I got to tell you, I thought you were nuts with all this. The government's putting fluoride in the water to brain damages. And look, I know that's over the top. I know that's crazy. I'm not the one that wrote an 1,100-page book called Eco-Science. I'm not the White House science czar, John P. Holdren. I mean, we have their frickin' textbooks, folks. The Soviets, in their gulags, put something like 20 parts per million, way higher than what we do, in the water to control people. The Nazis, when they had the, the uh, Soviet-slash-German uh, pact for a while splitting up Poland, the Germans learned about that. <clears throat> That's in Pulitzer Prize-winning books, that they put fluoride in the water to lower your fertility and make you passive. It's what it does. It basically binds to hormones in your body. Lowers testosterone, as a lot of other things to basically make you passive. You know what they feed prisoners in 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 in, in uh, jails around the country for whatever reason. That's just who, nobody knows why you buy it, but three hundred parts per million in the powdered eggs of fluoride. Three hundred parts per million, folks, will will absolutely eat your brain in a very short order. I remember going to camps and stuff where they'd have powdered eggs, and I was always could eat anything, but I'd vomit those things up. I learned very early, don't I can't eat powdered eggs because they've got freaking fluoride in it, folks. 300 times stronger than what's in the water. People say, well, why do you harp on this? I just can't help but warn people, hey, you might want to look at this. People say, oh, why do you care? Why are you up on a high horse? What the hell am I supposed to do? I don't care if mainstream media makes fun of me and says, oh, look, he thinks fluoride's bad for you. Ha, 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 Dr. Strangelove. I just want to warn people. Now, I want to get to this clip, but this is a big deal. And this is what really hit me this morning. And I've said this a lot. And you're like, tell us something we don't already know. I, I just, it really hit me at a very deep level that our worst analyses of these people are basically dead on. That they really do want to shut down free independent press in this country. They're already telling kids what words they can use. All this just cult-like programming. And the president is really running around as an agent of the communist Chinese. They're so desperate now with their partners that own most of our debt and are buying up Hollywood. That, that, that Again, I talked about this Friday, I talked about it Sunday, I talked about it now. It's such a big deal. And, and if you're a new viewer, you can just Google, China tells U.S. to crack down on fake news. China tells web companies to you know restrict nationalists, to restrict Trump people. I mean, the communist Chinese that don't allow elections, that in every city have over a dozen mobile execution vans per city that around the clock go around killing people and cutting their organs out and then loading it on ice to be flown to Japan for implantation. I mean, it's industrial scale, like mobile slaughterhouses. Just, just so evil, you can't even describe what's going on. This is who our elite are. This is what they want. This is the Foxcom model with suicide nets around the buildings. Do you understand, folks? This, If they could have a perfect world, all the liberal companies, Apple and Microsoft, they have the worst policies and the worst slave labor, but it's okay because their chairman and people have mustaches and wear pink and you know green socks. It's all camouflage for how hardcore monstrous these people are. It's like Bono gives 1.4% of the money he puts on these big concerts and raises billions for African starving kids, and the frickin' demon keeps... 98 plus percent of it. I mean, and you just like, it's okay because he's Bono and he wears red sunglasses. So it's okay because he, he has a mullet. So it's like cool. It's like, what the hell is going on with you people? 
It's like the Clintons robbing 96% of the money from the Haitians. It's like, who comes up with this type of crap? Who are these people? And then I ask, who are we? And we've got Obama running around as a mouthpiece for the Communist Chinese Central Committee that's so arrogant. It is in the Wall Street Journal, the Associated Press everywhere saying to American government, you get your ass in line and you shut down Matt Drudge and Alex Jones. That's when they say fake news, that's who they're talking about. And then the surrealness of the communist Chinese perched on top a billion, 300 million people with 7,000 riots is estimated a month. The UN even estimates that. There are people battling for oxygen. The generals and their families, filthy rich, buying huge homes right here in Austin. And they're just taking all that wealth and bringing it right back to the United States to totally control us. And they've got a uh, social score. They put it in China where if you criticize government or you do this or that now, oh, you just get restricted on the web and get a bad social score, which is also a credit score. And finally, if your score goes low enough, they come and arrest you, blood type you, put you on an exercise regiment with other prisoners growing organic food, and then they kill you. And then our media won't give any help to these poor people. They just say Alex Jones doesn't like Asians. <laughs> See, you can have the moral high ground. Just, oh, we shouldn't have Chinese being murdered and enslaved and execution vans and, and suicide nets and 18-hour workdays and blood on the electronic projects because they're working their fingers to bloody pulps. And we're, and we're such scumbags. We don't demand good treatment of these people. The answer is just, oh, shut up, racist. See? CNN tonight. Is anti-China backlash connected to racism? And then they cut. This has happened like three times over the last 15 years. I know of it's a, it's a script they follow. People like Alex Jones. And then it shows me ranting about China. It's just like, what the hell, man? And I get it. It's all corporate. It's top-down. It's these psychopaths on top. So it's the top-down corporations that they get all these minions in the media to go along with it. But instead of that, they don't just get minions now. They get people that like it, folks. They like it. Now let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and and play this clip of the president of the United States in Peru at this global summit. Putin's there talking about meeting with Trump over the phone and peace and all this stuff that's important and organic food initiatives globally. That's what he was down there talking about, making deals with Peru to go back and forth with organic food. I mean, this is oh, organic food family. Oh, no fluoride in the water. That's what's on Russian TV. They've already hit bottom, see? They're coming back up. And the response is, Obama, we've got to stop the new independent media. We've got to stop the fake news. I love how Ron Paul came out with a big list of, uh, and I said, I'm going to do this too, of fake news sites. Paul Watson listed these last Friday. And I'm proud of the fact Paul basically followed suit because we're just pointing out the obvious. You started all the wars. You lie. Fake polls. Fake reporters. F interviewing your own people. Just unbelievable crap. You've all been caught. Fake focus groups. On and on and on. That's up on DrudgeReport.com. Ron Paul reveals hit list of alleged fake news journalists. I mean, it, it's just it's ridiculous. And that's all they've got. So here is El Presidente in Peru lecturing the World Forum that we have to, quote, end fake news, which means news they don't control. Here it is. The concern I have has less to do with any particular misinformation or propaganda that's being put out. Uh, I mean, bare knuckles truth? By any particular party, and a greater concern about uh, the general misinformation from all kinds of sources, both domestic, foreign, uh, on social media, uh, that make it very difficult to voters for voters to figure out what's true and what's not. He's telling the world that we got hoodwinked by the internet. 
Let me put it this way. I think if we have a strong, uh, accurate, and responsible press, and we have a strong civic uh, culture and an engaged citizenry. Oh, that's good. Then We're going to come back with more on the fake news, but th th this is their total collapse of credibility. They're absolutely desperate, and they're trying to grab victory from the jaws of defeat and just spin the whole thing around that, oh, you've got to have a strong media, I mean, central government media, and, you know, shut these people down. We'll, we'll be right back. Stay with us. And note, we're not trying to massage our way into power. We're not trying to finesse our way or English our way. We are crashing through the lies and disinformation. We're making it a blood sport. We're making it entertaining like it's supposed to be. We're making it exhilarating. Let's hear a little bit more of this. Some of that anvil of crom. Good stuff. They called this movie when it came out in what, 1982 or whatever, fascist because it was made in Spain. And it showed a powerful male role model, Arnold Schwarzenegger in Conan the Barbarian. Think about that. Even then, the social control was so bad that you're not even supposed to show men as strong role models, especially the individual taking on the evil centralized government, false doom and this mountain of power. The day of doom is here. Go forth. Yeah, how'd that go for old Tulsa Doom? And his mountain of power. Is there a dagger for me such as this? First movie's really good. The second one's super cheesy, different directors. I am now digressing. Uh, let me just finish up with El Presidente. And this is the president. In Peru at a World Summit, warning of fake news and explaining to the world how they lost. Oh, it's because they let media exist, which you tried to curtail, which you tried to censor. Uh, the Trump campaign has come out now and showed documents where Twitter was censoring everything they were doing. I mean, you people are sick. Now, they couldn't really censor Trump because it was so open. But they always want to censor at the lower levels. They try to target the smaller organizations. They're the canary in the coal mines. But just remember... They don't want us here on air telling you Marie Le Pen is ahead in the polls in France, another nationalist winning. Oh, where's, I mean, what's the fake news in that? CNBC. Donald Trump victory shows power is slipping from the hands of the elites. Francis Le Pen is in the lead. Their response is say fake. Oh, Donald Trump's not going to win the nomination. Oh, doesn't matter if he actually has all the votes. We just don't give it to you. There was never votes. It, well, come on, conspiracy theorists. actually said that on Fox News. It's a conspiracy theory, uh, conspiracy theorist, that your vote ever counted. I mean, give me a break. The mere plurality of uh, voters. And they just sit there believing all their BS is still having an effect still working. And yes, it's working on super stupid people and desperate conformists that just think if they conform or virtue signal, oh, you want someone to write Trump, but they have this initiative to write any name you want on a paper cup, like you're two years old. Oh, well, I'll be out on the road. Starbucks has got powerful coffee. I'll drink it sometimes. I'm, I'm never drinking any of it again, ever. Not in my house, not on the road, ever. As far as I'm concerned, it's synonymous with cultural brain tumors. Just destroy all these people by our own loving actions. Just withdraw from them. I'm serious. I'll never see another Tom Hanks movie again. In, any, in, any of these people I see. And, and, you know, before I say, hey, boycott this film, boycott that. I mean, now I really mean it where Tom Hanks did all these skits saying Donald Trump was racist with no proof, dressing up like a Trump supporter to project that crap so that we could have everyday racial attacks against whites that the news doesn't even cover. And, and, and here's the issue. 
I, I would be pissed off about racial attacks, especially by whites against blacks or something, because it just adds to all this. But, I mean, it's not right that the media covers it up and then has the nerve to run around and say that it's whites that are doing it. But all the statistics show that's not the case. It's just sad. So I will apologize that my ancestors from the last Ice Age had to build shelters and had to think ahead or they'd all die. And I'll say a lot of evil has come out of long-range thinking. A lot of good's come out of it, too. But let's just, let's just admit what the big problem, the big elephant in the room is, because IQs vary and they're pretty much the same across the board, but there's different talents on average in different groups. That doesn't mean there isn't someone in a particular group that on average is smarter than somebody else in another group, a particular thing. But the whole point is... People have different anatomy. Humans vary, and, 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 and so it is really the, 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 the Western quandary uh, over is this Pandora's box of long-term strategic thinking a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I think in the hands of people that care about freedom and care about humanity, want to lift humanity up, it's a very positive thing. But know this, the globalists are using long-term thinking and strategic thinking against all of us. And you've got these strategic elites that are in there controlling the cultural future, and they thought they'd use the Internet to dominate and control us. It totally blew up in their face on every front. To where now, they have had to summon the communist Chinese to waddle the most bloodthirsty drunk on the blood of innocence organization the, 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 most, the highest kill list the most evil group in world history is the communist chinese i mean they are it slave masters over a billion plus people and they think we're so broke back that they are in the newspapers telling us shut down your fake news and the president like a paid for spokesman or lackey runs around parroting it. And within three, four days of, the, of this communist uh, you know, garbage going on, we have reporters in Austin and in uh, Cleveland who caught communists with red flags screaming, we're going to attack you, InfoWars, if you don't leave, you don't have free speech. And saying, InfoWars is fake news, fake news. Like that's the powerful talking point they got from the big corporate mainstream media and the communist Chinese, and they're proud of it. And by the way, all the communist groups, don't talk about Marx or Engels, they all identify with China. That's the motherland. But it's not even communism. It's a bunch of rich generals so decadent and out of their minds on power trips that it makes your head spin. Pissing on us. And then they hope we have a war with Russia because if the United States ever links up with Russia and promotes a new renaissance, it's game over for the New World Order. And, and, and here's the great news. We're only a few steps away from that victory. Despite the political programming, despite the brainwashing that goes on in the churches that are state-run, under 501c3, that it's the end of the world every five minutes. So don't get involved. Praise God, it's getting worse. It means Jesus is right around the corner. You think Jesus will recognize you when all Jesus did was confront evil? And then you sit there and say, thank God it's getting really bad. Oh, I heard they're going to put chips in little kids now. Yeah, they have ABC, CBS, NBC pieces going, your children will soon have chips. Oh, praise God, the rapture's around the corner. The enemy's number one weapon. We don't have to fight King George. We'll just be raptured. Didn't exist in 1776. All extruded BS. Twisted by devilish men to deceive the public. But regardless of what you believe on that front, Copping out is why we've reached this sad state of affairs. And Henry Kissinger is in the news. I'm going to go to this clip I was mentioning. Saying, 
oh, uh, don't worry, Trump doesn't really stand for anything. He's not beholden to anyone, so I can mold him. No, he's beholden to cutting taxes and securing the border and promoting sovereignty and not having one-sided trade deals. That means the end of globalism. They keep saying he stands for nothing. That's another lie. Trump stands for nothing. There's nothing on his website. Been up there for over a year. It'd be nice if we what you know make America great again. We love to know what that means. Well, it means not exporting every last one of our jobs out of the country. It means it's not bad to have a strong leader who mobilizes and has confidence with the public. It's everything they're scared of. They're scared of masculinity in the world, which creates the drive and the passion to build civilization. And it's because the robber barons already have the wealth and the power. They already convinced us to put half the country as national parks so no one else could have it, instantly making all their property worth more. And they just think they own everything. They think they own your reproductivity. They think you own, uh, uh, they own where we're going to go. They control the entire species. And, I, and, and, and all we're here doing is saying, hey, let's have a real debate about where the species is going. And oh boy, boy, they really think you're stupid. The communist Chinese are in every freaking newspaper in the country. Just, just type it in for TV viewers, please. China's government tells tech companies to control fake news in the U.S. Or Chinese government tells Congress control fake news or crack down on nationalists. I mean, oh, you're, oh, the Chinese are telling us crack down on your nationalists. Every American out there should, should be outraged by this. I mean, can you imagine if the Russians were saying shut down our free speech? China says terrorism, fake news, imperil greater global internet curbs. Or impel, we must have them. China says terrorism, fake news, impel, they're impelled to do it. Greater global internet curbs. Oh, they're the model. They censor their people. They execute you if you criticize the government even mildly, but not before they steal your organs. And so they're the moral for Thank you. Oh, Zuckerberg met with them repeatedly last year. The head of their censorship bureau from China came to teach how we do it. Oh, thank you. Oh, this isn't creepy. And then you've got the minions of all of this so pissed off at me in Austin that I'll I'll see the walk. Like a like kind of like a teenager, but like really insecure, but trying to act confident. It, 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 it's like a delusion walk. And I'm sitting, and I'm sitting there doing a Facebook mention. I see the guys walk, you know, behind the camera, you know, behind the camera guy. And I go, and these guys are laughing at us. Um, and they couldn't even hear me. I was just like, these guys are laughing at us. They're probably going to do something. I, I, and then they drive around and go, F you, Alex Jones, you know, on video. And then drive off like cowards, not even getting the whole, could have just walked up and been on TV. But that's what I mean. It's the inherent cowardice of these people are literally singing from global corporate hymn sheets. They are following the directives of the communist Chinese. I mean, the, 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 the communist groups are all the streets of Austin. I mean, by the thousands sometimes. They say, we get our orders from China. And Jones, when we take over, you're freaking dead. They were death threatening me up there in the latest video out of Cleveland. They said, you ever come back here? We got something for you, buddy. You're going six feet under. <laughs> oh, man, I'm so scared of, of like, demons <coughs> that are attracted because of your degenerate families and just your, your weakness, your evil, your, just your fundamental <coughs> crookedness to like flutter around the fire of the communist Chinese. That's your power when it's on the verge of collapsing. This is what you're into. I mean, what the hell? And on tape, they go, I kill my kids. Sweet David Knight's wife sat there with the camera talking to her sweetly. You know, it's okay. Some people want to adopt children. There's more people wanting to adopt each year than kids that are aborted. Did you know? Oh, shut up, white filth. Your mother sucks. You know what in hell? I mean, her voice is like that. We played the video. She goes, 
Well, no, I, I, I didn't. I didn't adopt a white child. I adopted a, 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 a girl from China. Oh, more white savior. Well, what? A, but it's nice to be sweet to babies. I kill my kids. This is real. I kill them. I kill them. I kill them. I kill them. Ah. I mean, where the what the what freaking dimension is this little creature from? Because let me tell you, folks, they aren't just picking up on this. There's something in these people. You're looking at a freaking little green man, folks, and they hate our freaking guts. Spiritual, whatever you want to call it, folks, they're, these people aren't driving the, the freaking car. You understand? I mean, I don't care where it is for 20 years. You're around communists or these people, they'll just suddenly go, eh, they'll say, you have control, they're going to kill you. You're like, what the? F and it's like, they're demons, folks, and they know they are. <laughs> so let's go ahead and play Obama saying, fake news, this is the number one threat. It's just, it means people we don't agree with. And now they're trying to belly up. But, oh, Trump's in. What are you going to do? See, oh, and Le Pen's about to get in. Oh, and the Brexit. Oh, oh, and Russia. See, the tide's turning against them. Drudge got it right. And I don't want to kiss. I'm not kissing Drudge's ass. Drudge just has this way of crystallizing it when he said, globalist meat to plot survival. But, but let me tell you, you go to the big box churches, they're just like, the end of the world's coming. Uh, just give up. You've lost everything. Christians, don't, don't, don't go out in public. Don't speak out. Do what the government says. Okay, the Chinese are right. Censorship. Alex Jones is evil. Uh, uh, just do what you say. Okay, I mean, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And they know they're betraying goodness because I've gone to Methodist churches. I've gone to the evangelicals, all of them. And you can see them, and they'll get up and just start going... Well, thank you. This this offering is going to go to help the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation with all their great work. And then, oh, and then like the woman preacher creeps off and the male preacher creeps back up and it's all just like weird. And it's like there's like these creepy people that lust after leadership but don't have any of it. Let's go out to break with Obama. Here it is. Let me put it this way. I think if we have a strong, uh, accurate... State-run media and responsible press and we have a strong civic uh, culture and an engaged citizenry then various attempts to meddle in our elections uh, won't mean much yeah it's it's the engaged it's citizenry that kicks your ass uh, elections that aren't focused on issues uh, and are full of fake news and false information <laughs> uh, and distractions uh, and the issue is not going to be what's happening from the outside the issue is going to be there aren't going to be statues of this guy built on Mars from the inside uh, the good news is that's something that we have control over we'll be back stay with us again I don't come up with this stuff when the Secret Service says that uh, Hillary and them are involved in devil worship but you know and you notice it comes out now, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, look, you can't make up national television twice during pro-life bills about to pass and just women in, like, business attire just show up by the hundreds screaming, we want blood, we want dead babies, hell, Satan, sticking their tongues out and flopping around. We have hours of this footage. We've got it on tape ourselves. And our reporters have said, are you part of a group? And said, no, we just... We work here in the Capitol, or we were down the street, we came, we came. It's just like, there's like some broadcasting wavelength these people are on, man. It's really weird, okay? I don't understand it all. I'm just telling you, these people are tuned into some bad mojo, man. Bad stuff. That's why they want to screw everything over. And they're just turned over to it. I'm going to say this, and then I'm just going to leave it at this. Um, we're really good at, I mean, I can say that. I don't say it arrogantly. I'm actually humble. I don't want to say how big we are, but I want to let you know the success we're having. We're really good at having 40 million viewers a week now on an average week and listeners. 40 million. That's a very low number. 40 million. The election was like 80-something million just video views. And you count everything else, it's like 
hundred and something million. It's just insane. <laughs> Shows that big <laughs> should be making like ten million dollars a day. You know, but that's all the corporate system, folks. Like we're two and a half men, you know, makes fifty million dollars an episode, and then you know, only has thirty million viewers. It's like, well, but but I put out a video, it's thirty million views. It doesn't, you know, we get a thousand dollars from YouTube or whatever. Uh, I'm not bitching. I just want to say. I appreciate your prayers. I appreciate your support. And uh, we got really good products that everybody needs to buy. We're about to sell out of the uh, Trump's My President shirt. That's at cost, $9.95, which should be included. <laughs> We've got a uh, Black Friday specials running throughout the week. A lot of new specials at InfoWarsStore.com. And I just want to invite everybody to take advantage of that at InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, we have the BioPCA, which is the... Uh, hair, nails, and skin formula. Uh, it's already super low price, super high quality, but it's 25% off our ultimate new hair, skin, and nail formula. And obviously, if it's good for that, it's good for a lot of other things. But this is one of the most observable th products we've got where you can really see what it does for your for, for your body. And, and again, we could put it in some fancy bottle and sell it for $60, $70 with what's in it. This is one of those products where the industry rips everybody off. The ingredients don't cost a lot of money. They're high quality. Again, leading competitors have one ingredient, ours is a whole bunch, of lesser quality and lesser dose for 40-something bucks. It's $19.95 at InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLive.com. Stay with us. Thank you. We see the people that have sold out to the false glory of the corporate system. It's a fool's gold. The reality is destiny is laying before us, and it's about making the right decisions. Henry Kissinger, as I mentioned earlier, has come out and said that Trump doesn't stand for anything. And he doesn't owe anyone. He's truly independent. So they can now direct him. That's the consummate opportunist. Always recalibrating, always figuring out a new way to weevil around. No, Trump has the advisors and Trump wants to have better trade deals and cut our taxes and make people prosperous, knowing that the American system you've been trying to kill with globalism will outcompete you and will outdeliver you. And the plan is, as stated by Bannon and stated by myself and stated by Trump and everybody else, is to restore 1776 worldwide. And doesn't mean America is going to go put troops in your country, but the systems of the Magna Carta and the Great Enlightenment and the Renaissance in 1776 are going to be put out there and the technology of liberty and free will is going to be laid bare on the battlefield for anyone that wishes to use it and we're going to kick your ass. You come out and say we're fake news, we go and show all the fake news you actually engaged in. I love when they say we're fake news, they don't show anything that was fake. Or they take stuff out of context. And you see it in everywhere. It's like in newspapers every day for years. Jones says that uh, Obama sent a tornado to hit Oklahoma City. No such quote, no such video, just completely made up. Woman calls in and says, I think it was a weather weapon. What do you think? And I said, they do have weather weapons. It's on the Weather Channel. But they're generally not controlled tornadoes. It's, 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 it's major fronts. And a lot of that's classified. But I don't, I don't think this was a weapon. That turns into Obama sent a tornado. But the straw men don't work because people actually hear what we say and what we stand for. And really, it's not a testament to how successful InfoWars is. It's a testament to how discredited and arrogant and brain dead the mainstream media is who haven't learned anything from their defeat. What, on November 8th? That's like, how many days ago was that? 13 days ago, 14 days ago? Hard to believe it's already that far back. We're going to come back uh, after this with James Wesley Rawls, one of my favorite guests, former Army intelligence officer. Humble guy, but he's been, over the years, highly recommended by a lot of folks. Uh, and, uh, and he's going to come on and talk about this major victory and how he thinks they're going to counterstrike against it. But, but, but make no mistake, our providence was so great, we are being given one last chance. And at this point, we're so damn evil. I, 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 I just, whatever happens, happens. I mean, you know, 
And I'm not up on some high horse. Let's get that straight. But, you know, I like to have a good time. I don't want to hurt anybody. And I'm guilty for the way I am. Uh, I cannot imagine being out to get people and out to hurt poor people and just disdaining everyone. Because look, 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 the globalists hate themselves. So they're projecting their hatred onto the world. That's the most important thing to know here. We'll be back. I'm going to say something here that is really important. And we say a lot of things that are important, obviously, but I really want to just note this. In the last two years, we have witnessed the complete weaponization of mainstream media and, and levels of deception and lies unparalleled. The complete abandonment of any journalistic standards. Incredible deceptions that I, I, I'm just, it's unbelievable. I mean, take Bloomberg two days ago, ran a headline, Donald Trump admits he ripped off 6,000 people. And they put a fake tweet. It wasn't even a shot of a tweet. They were too lazy to even Photoshop it. And they're just like, sue me to Trump. Knowing the federal courts have ruled, they can just lie now. You can get a ruling, but you don't basically get any money. There's no unjust in, uh, enrichment. It's like, wow, that's their answer. They're going to go total fake news, then say we're fake news. And the communist Chinese... I keep going back to this. I've got hundreds of articles that are incredibly important. All these video clips, all this exciting stuff to cover. But I just, do you understand the communist Chinese are the biggest mass murderers in history by double? No one else even killed half of what they did, their own people. And they were in every newspaper, including this weekend. I was at a neighbor's house and they had the Austin American Statesman. And there it was on the front. China tells U.S. to rein in hate. Again, this would be like a guy pulling up in a white creeper van playing ice cream truck music with kids hanging off meat hooks on the back and then telling you you shouldn't let your kids play with Nerf guns in their front yard. I mean, I mean, this is like Freddy Krueger on PCP showing up, the total evil censor of the web, saying your government better get its ass in line and shut down Infowars.com and MattDrudge.com because that's, that's who they're listing. Now, Trump just wants us to have lower taxes and better trade deals. He knows, I, I knew this before he even announced it, that as you could tell, we're synced, that he would end up being at his Trump Tower half the time just to, just to shake up the whole deal and put the globalist off balance. The guy has just instincts that are unbelievable. And the left thinks, oh, he suckered right-wingers, he's really a liberal. Well, he's a liberal in that he's socially tolerant, but the guy is Americana. And this isn't some butt-kissing contest over Trump, but the Lord works in mysterious ways. They are in full crisis mode right now. And again, he's given four speeches in the last week on the world stage, the latest in Peru. He's given them in Germany, other areas, Greece, you name it, saying, oh, Trump won because there's fake news. We need a strong media system, central government, to counter it. So he's got 60 days. What is it, 59 days, 60 days? How many days till the inauguration? And they are just pulling out all the stops. So here's the deal. We've had major victories, but we're far from, you know, out of this. It's like your baby gets into the, you know, third trimester. Doesn't mean you're not going to have a preemie. The baby could die. We're in the third trimester here, but Providence is moving. But the evil is also moving very, very quickly. But Le Pen is in the lead in France. The UK is pulling out of Brexit. Sure, they're blocking it. We knew they would. That only makes it that much clearer. Long term, we win. We fight, we win. We run away, we fail. Unelected central governments taking over your countries, shipping in all these foreigners, demonizing everybody, raising taxes, brainwashing children against their parents. It's not popular. We're promoting the classic human system of prosperity against a system of austerity and lies by a corrupt elite that don't even follow their own rules. We're 59 days out, folks. But all over the world, led by Russia, and Russia is a strong man thing. It's got mafias. It's got its own problems, systemic and cultural. I've studied it. But they're promoting Christianity, they're promoting family, they're promoting organic food, they're, 
the, their top TV host that's best friends with Putin. I was told by the head of RT nine years ago, and I wasn't arrogant, so I didn't believe it. And then I was later told by other people, oh, you don't know RT, basically the directive is be like Alex Jones. Expose the dehumanization, expose it. The Russians actually got it. Solzhenitsyn met dozens of times before he died with Putin and said, you should launch a nationalism and a pro-family operation and break free of the communists and break free of the social engineers. Solzhenitsyn wrote a bunch of books, not just Gulag Archipelago that won the, won the Nobel Prize for Literature. And I've read several of the... Of the uh, English translations, I'll be honest, I only read chapters because I, I can't, the damn things are super wordy. But uh, the point is that, and all the thick, you know, footnoting and just all of it, I mean, it's some heady, heady stuff. He doesn't do that to be heady, he does it because that's the full context. This is an anti human science, people. This is Satanism injected into real politics. This is the French Revolution. Versus our real revolution, you understand, they launch their counterfeit after. There's a counterfeit 1776. The devil always has a counterfeit. Now, for the rest of the hour, joining us is best-selling author, both of fiction and nonfiction, James Wesley Rawls, survivalblog.com, one of the top survivalist experts in the world, former Army intelligence. He's a humble guy, but a lot of big wigs. I haven't been having him on for over a decade. You'll say, oh, that's a really great guy. He knows what he's talking about. And uh, look, look, we've had a major reprieve, obviously. I want him to speak to this. He was on right before the election. How are they going to counter strike? Where does he see us right now? Um, what does he make of the open calls to end our free speech? China openly intercessing itself domestically and our media just reporting it like it's no big deal. Democratic strategist was on Tucker, Car uh, Tucker Carlson's show Friday. And she said, oh, we need to do like China. We need to shut Alex Jones down. China knows what to do. They, they deserve good news. See, they want good news, happy news. So we're going to go over all this. I don't do pre-interviews with Rawls. We'll see what he wants to get into, but there's so much here to cover. Where do you want to start? Well, Alex, um, I think it's important that we look at current events in the context of the, the grand strategy that the globalists have been attempting for many, many years. And they came very close to reaching their goal with the attempted coronation of Hillary Clinton. And that goal was, was, was thwarted. But their basic uh, long-term strategy is still in place. And they're, I think they're going to do their very best to push the Trump administration into a position where they cannot put into play all of their uh, planned agenda for decreasing the size of government and increasing human liberty. They are still put, the globalists are still pushing very, very hard, and they're at a juncture now where it, it's essentially going to reach a crisis point where they're, they're gonna be willing to either cause a third world war or cause a full scale economic collapse in order to make that happen. I agree with you. And if you look at this, the, their body language, which, which I'm actually don't like to see, their body language is they're not as arrogant as they used to be. They look deer in the headlights, truly shaken, their con game, their power trip, uh, absolutely decimated, and we all know the con artist is the person you know really believing their BS the most. You can't cheat an on honest man. You can't you know basically get him into a scam. But th these people actually buy into their own cosmology. And do you agree with me that if you, if you look at Obama and and Hillary and the rest of them, they yeah, just yes. they yeah. look completely freaked out. Well, Alex, I think that um, Clinton and her crowd have definitely been pushed off to the sidelines, but their handlers, the, the real power behind the throne, really are, are still committed to global governance. Global governance, they want a global, a one world currency, electronic currency, and they want to subsume national sovereignty under uh, a true global sphere. And at this point, 
they really felt disappointed by not being able to corral the election the way they wanted. So I think they're going to they're going to basically double down. They're going to push things to the point where they can implement their agenda. And the only way that they can do that now is not through the political process. They're going to do it economically and geopolitically um, by fomenting a crisis. Sure. A crisis and, and so big that it'll be on the scale of World War II. And that's what we saw the head of the army say recently, that a war is coming as big as World War II. I, I believe it is. Uh, you know, I think it's this is evidence that we're living in the age of deception and betrayal. And at this point, we cannot trust most of the people sitting in Congress. And I, we, I have a limited level of trust for the, the people sitting in the White House, but uh, we need to be prepared for some very traumatic times. And we need to be praying for the Trump administration, everyone on that transition team, all of his designees for uh, the key cabinet positions and all the advisors. Yeah, they all need providence now more than ever. Well, yeah, it, we need to be praying that, that they truly believe in limited government, in individual liberty, in constitutional law. And by that, I mean the original intent of the founding fathers. And if Trump surrounds himself with people like that, we have a chance. That's right. Let's come back and talk about reaching a crisis point. You bet. How the globalists are going to strike back, what you think Trump should do. Uh, because, look, it's not about vindictiveness. It's about justice. I think he goes on offense. And I think it's time to basically have the military arrest the globalists. I I'm serious, folks. I'm going to call for it when we come back. We're live from the InfoWars.com studios in Austin, Texas. I'm your host, Alan Jones, best-selling author and former Army intelligence officer and really smart guy. James Rosie Rawls is our guest. This is a short segment. Again, we have a long segment coming up. Look, I know it's a military tactic and a historical tactic to demonize your enemy. And the enemies usually demonize you. So, you know, at least in the, in, in the manifestation that they're involved in against you, uh, it appears to be quite demonic. But when I sit here and say the globalists are an evil ideology that really is anti-human, just look at what they do. And they're really nasty and they're really committed to what they're doing. And when I said earlier, it's really time if the grand juries won't act and if we don't get Senator Sessions confirmed, which is a big signal that Trump's going after him, we're never going to route all this. I mean... This isn't free speech. George Soros is a Nazi collaborator. By the way, we finally found, folks found, it's been gone for years. They took it off the web, his Nazi collaborator comments where he's proud of it and all the rest of it. We're going to play that coming up in the next segment. But what I'm getting at here is th these are true criminals trying to overthrow the country and take our free speech. They've committed all these crimes. They stole the election from Bernie Sanders. They're trying to create race wars. The more cops have been executed in the last 24 hours. Black men just shooting cops that are you know, riding tickets or changing tires. And again, more race war garbage. It's like at some point, I, I've always said a military coup is very dangerous. Look, look what happens to third world countries. We already have a globalist coup. And so all I'm saying is I don't shoot my mouth off. I don't talk about things like this unless I really mean it. We're in peril. And I think maximum offense is the way to take these people down, not just sitting here and letting them continue to bleed this country. Now, I want to give Trump time to get in. I, I want to see the grand juries go after folks. But, Mr. Rawls, what do you think? Well, Alex, I have to agree with you that the globalists are truly evil. And at this point, they are truly desperate. And we, with the Trump election, we have forced them into a corner in that they only have a couple of possible solutions to salvage their agenda. And neither of those are very appealing. Those are those being global war or global economic collapse. But we've got to recognize that they're willing to take those steps to see their agenda fulfilled. And that's what they're, I'm saying. That, that, and, and, and they're so arrogant, that, they admit that. So we have to go after them then. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, when they're that evil, that craven, 
we really do need to go on the offensive. I think it's important that people be fully engaged politically, that they do their very best to speak out when they see uh, this evil agenda. They need to do their best to support the Trump administration. And assuming that Trump does indeed surround himself with godly men and, and godly women in his cabinet, we need to give them our full support. But beyond that, I think it's important for us to have our own contingency plans that if, if the system is collapsed intentionally, we need to be positioned where we're well provisioned. To pick up the pieces. It's only, it's only the people who are not worried about their next meal uh, are, are out there. It's, it's only going to be in a situation like that. It's only going to be those people who are going to be able to speak up. Everyone else is just going to be worried about feeding their families. That's right. The enemy battle plan. Starving, starving to death or freezing to death. It's only the people who are well provisioned who are going to be in a, in a position to help uh, the political process to restore order if there's, if there's a, a crisis, if there's a collapse. So that makes it very, very important for people to be well prepared. And a lot of the products that you advertise there in your own store, I think, are good products for people to think about getting. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I personally am ready. I mean, I, and, I, and I wish this wasn't the case. We're about to go to break, but let me ask you this, and I, and I want to come back and talk about what you see long term, regardless. Sure. I mean, I'm, I mean, I see why. You, I mean, obviously, you agree that we're in a crisis. We've got to get more serious. I don't want to sit here and escalate things, but they're clearly digging in and moving against us. And they're just so criminal. They're not allowed to just openly plot the overthrow of the country and criminal activity. This is sedition. If I was talking like this, I should be arrested. Sure, certainly. The, um, the, the same level of preparedness that the, the New World Order crowd has taken should be what motivates us. Because... They have their their deep underground bunkers in Lord knows where, whether it's New Zealand or wherever. We need to have our own countermeasures. We need to have our own security, our own our own steps. Let's talk about that, James. I'm gonna when we come back because I always ask the questions. I want you to go where you want to go with those wild cards. Talk about your latest book, and I want to talk about the the elite are running to their bunkers. That's in the news. So doesn't that signify that even before got uh, before Trump got elected? That, that, that they are uh, actually running up the white flag to a certain extent? Well, we've seen Dave Chappelle come out in support of Trump just saying, give the guy a chance. This stuff's made up. Now we have the BET founder says, give Trump a chance. Famous blacks are rejecting anti-Trump protests. Yeah, he, he had one of the, I saw this article yesterday, one of the highest ratings as seen as positive in BET polls a decade ago was Donald Trump. And now he's a racist. It's, it's just, it's pure weaponization. Again, Kissinger's out saying, oh, Trump doesn't, isn't, isn't beholden to anyone. We can really mold him. He's beholden to the American people. He's antithetical to your globalist system. I don't care if he meets with somebody like Kissinger or meets with Richard and Haas, who then attacked him two days later, six months ago. But they're not going to leave him alone if he brings them in to his operation. And he fundamentally knows that. And the Senator Sessions, Jeff Sessions, moved to appoint him as the Attorney General if he makes confirmation. That'll be another race-baiting fest of disinfo. Signifies they're going after the Clintons. And that's what's got to be done. Look, I could play ball with these people. I was offered $3 million. Then I was offered $10 million. Sounds like a lot. Doesn't sound like a lot now, does it? To go join the establishment, be a mainline right-wing talker, and they tell me what to say and what to do. You know what? No thanks. Oh, I could be accepted by the system. <laughs> That's a joke. We're going to go back to our guest here in a moment. Um, this is the house you built, the InfoWars listeners and viewers, and we have Black Friday specials running all this week. We are funded 70-plus percent by direct sales. We couldn't do this if we just went off sponsorship. I mean, we reached, again, like I told you, 85 million people just on videos election week. We were up to 28 million people a week tuning in one way or another. Now it's 40 million is our new new basement. 
That's our new bottom. That really shakes up the system. And I'm great at reaching new people. You're great at reaching new people. You're the eyes and ears. You take action. I love you. I thank you. I, I cannot thank you enough. You, I cannot explain to you how you are the heart, the muscle, the brains, the sinew, the guts, the bones, everything. But we're not good at raising money. We bring in the money that a medium-sized newspaper does and do things that are just incredible. Because the mainstream media is just that bad. It's not that I'm that good. But our crew does an amazing job. Uh, we're running specials throughout this week. One of the specials is at InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, BioPCA, which is the hair, nails, and skin formula. And some of our formulas have a high price tag. Some have a low price tag. It depends on if they're really good things for your body that are low price. We'll put out a, a very low cost, high quality supplement. 60 vegetarian capsules, BioPCA. And, and, and again, one of the things that's in it has higher levels. It's the collagen of stuff that has lower levels, and it's $45 for a bottle that just has a fancy glass container. And I've had so many marketers tell me, I don't ever go to marketing school or study into this. They go, listen, everybody charges five times more in supplements because people only care about the packaging, and they care about the fact that it costs a bunch, so they think it must be good. Well, I'm not doing that. And I mean, look, I just, I got to treat you like I want to be treated. So yeah, we only make like $6 on a bottle of this, but it's a game changer and you'll want to order it over and over again. I'm not going to make it $50 when what's in the bottle costs us 10 bucks or whatever. I mean, I'm just not doing it. And, and this is a formula where it's not expensive to give you quality and game change. Take our bio PQQ. That's just one of the ingredients systems to tell you how cutting edge we are. With our DNA force, I, it, once a year now, go to the doctor, get blood taken, get a checkup. You know, I'm 42 years old. It's the third time I've done it. And the only supplements they're selling up there, and it's a really nice place. And I noticed they were now selling BioPQQ for $200 a bottle, half the servings. By the way, that's a good deal at 200 bucks. A lot of places sell it for 400 500 We sell it for $134 DNA force. Now, that's an expensive one. Anyways, InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or call toll-free 888-253-3139, 888-253-3139. It's not like we're not marking stuff up. There's $60 of stuff or $70, depending on which buy we do, in the bottle, and then we mark it up 100% to fund the operation. I mean, I'm not lying about that. It takes money to run this thing. I'm not marking it up five times or seven times. So we need your support, InfoWarsLife.com, or call toll-free, 888-253-3139. And we couldn't do it without you, so I salute and want to thank you all. We also, speaking of third-party sponsors, we have the great folks from Solutions from Science. Solutions from Science is having a moving warehouse sale. Here are three reasons you should get one of their perfect power solar generator systems. It's the same one I have in my home, the top-of-the-line model. It's expandable, has a wind input, and even produces pure sine wave power. So you can run medical equipment, even military-grade electronics. Go to PowerGridChaos.com. That's PowerGridChaos.com. Save over 70% while supplies last. PowerGridChaos.com. They have a lot of other great units. They've been a sponsor for 15 years, and we're just proud of them. Okay, I am done plugging. Please support our local affiliates as well. That is just as important as supporting this broadcast. That local station, don't just spread the word, folks. This is a war. And I think I just want to say this. Something I, 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 I want to say earlier. I've gone from thinking of most liberals as just kind of useful idiots that mean well and their controllers being evil to understanding they're picking up the carrier wave of this thing. They're now synced in and really were battle tested in this last election, even though they lost, to lie, to cheat, to steal, to be committed to fraud, to be committed to just mob psychology. And MSM pushing to shut down the new media because we're killing them. And so this is a war, people. And it means you do not spend money with the enemy. It means you, you, you expose the enemy. You start your own YouTube, your own Facebook, your own Twitter. Because here's how we killed them. It wasn't Alex Jones or James Wesley Rawls or any of the, of, of, you know, of the bigwigs of this that did it overall. It was millions of you of every race, color, and creed showing up at Trump rallies, putting your own YouTubes up talking about what you went through. Hispanics talking about being bullied by folks saying you better, you know, by their white professors, you better vote against Trump. This was America saying no to bullies and no to mind control. So I'm really proud of the country. 
We got the Soros clip coming up, but but I want to now for about the next ten minutes give our guest, former Army intelligence officer, best-selling author, uh, James Rosie Rawls of SurvivalBlog.com, to get into whatever big subjects he's focused on, where he sees all this going, and um, what keeps him up at night. So so thanks for joining us, James. Thank you, Alex. I, I do want to emphasize to your your viewers and listeners the importance of getting prepared because we're living in, in pretty perilous times, and we do seem to be on the cusp of a major crisis. And I think it'll come shortly after Trump is elected, or shortly after he's uh, seated in office. And we need to be ready for that. We only have a very short window of opportunity to prepare. And for all of your listeners who are heads of households, they have a responsibility to live up to to provide for their families. And you know the the multi-billionaires out there, uh, the globalists um, have uh, you know, unlimited resources to prepare and they have their contingency plans. But even we yeah, on very modest budgets can make can take steps substantive steps to prepare for our families so that we can pull through this so that we can be in a position to intervene. Uh, when there is a crisis, again, if, if you're starving, you're not part of the solution. You're part of the problem. So it's important that you be well prepared. You need a deep larder. You need to have those beans, bullets, and band-aids squared away. I've got to tell you, Alex, I have had a, a number of consulting clients over the last few months who are telling me that they're preparing to relocate this winter. In the dead of winter, they're planning to relocate to places like the American Redoubt, to places like the Cumberland Plateau in eastern Tennessee, to places like the, uh, the West Texas Hill Country, and to places like the Four Corners region. And these are pretty, pretty serious people. Some of them are millionaires. In fact, one of them is even a billionaire himself, although he's always careful to point out that he's a single-digit billionaire. Sure, James, um, let me add this point. While you're talking, you're on phone, you don't see it. We were showing mainstream news articles admitting the elites are moving to New Zealand, underground bunkers, building all these armored redoubts. So, and you're now bringing that up. What does that say about them, though? They're not that confident. Or is this confidence they're willing to put us into a global depression to get what they want? Well, I, I think they can see that they are fomenting a crisis that's so big that it, it threatens to swallow them as well that they're willing to crash the system and they're willing to, to, to hunker in their bunker, as it were, if they can get their agenda um, successfully implemented, if they can get their global governance, if they can get their global currency, they're willing to do that. That shows you, and, but that shows you just how desperate they are. But they're very, you know, conniving, scheming individuals. Sure, and as the world turns against them, Mr. Rawls, don't they see times on our side? They've now been identified. They always operated like nobody was listening to us. We're not caught flat-footed. We've exposed their entire system. We have affected the entire battle space. Well, certainly. I, I think that we, we have exposed them and identified them by name at this point, the George Soros's of the world. And I'm sure they're, they're a little, feeling a little uh, uncomfortable right now uh, being named. I think that's one reason they do have their contingency plans to to go scurry away if need be. But they're still very committed to their plans. They're still they're as I mentioned before, I think they're they're doubling down at this point to get their agenda. So it's important that we take our own steps, take our own countermeasures, and even on a modest budget, someone can can get squared away with food storage, with water filtration, first aid, with nutraceuticals. The whole works on a, on a pretty modest budget. Well, plus with Agenda 21, if we can, pulling out of the cities the thing to do to begin with, to sap support from the central cities, which they admit under their agenda, uh, is their whole program to collapse the rural area. We must countermeasure and go to rural areas to checkmate them and not comply now. That's right. And I think... The, the window of opportunity that we have for strategic relocation is likely to close sometime in the next year because 
once the system has collapsed, it simply won't be safe to be moving bag and baggage from place to place. Uh, you'll be lucky if you just get out of Dodge with, with one car load at that point. And, and so, by the way, we've been so insulated in the West. Why don't you explain to people that there are over 30 countries right now in total collapse mode, places like Venezuela mm -hmm. and others, and then others that are just in permanent stagnation like Cuba. I, I mean, uh, this level of industrial civilization is very hard to maintain if you don't have a vibrant growing economy and at least 2.1 children being born in every family. Yes, uh we need to recognize that um, our, our opportunity exists to relocate now, but it may not exist in another six months or 12 months. I agree, and my gut tells we me... Could, we my, could be reduced to third world living conditions in that period of time. If they, if they crash the system, they crash the dollar through a credit collapse, and it could be something as simple as, as raising interest rates by 2 or 3%. Because at this point, the U.S. Uh, debt is at a level where it's not su sure. sustainable. We sure, cannot James. service our debt if interest rates spike 2 or 3%. So something that simple could crash the whole system. Sure. L let me pin you down on this. When is enough enough? Everybody knows I never call for shooting wars. I don't make big bravado statements about physical stuff. I'm all about information warfare. But when the communist Chinese are in hundreds of newspapers saying shut down patriots in America and buying up all six Hollywood production studios and they're saying arrest Alex Jones, shut down Matt Drudge, just my basic instinct says we have to go on the offense. Well, this whole nightmare could end if we just had grand jury start indicting these people. There's only a couple hundred globalists and I'm not looking to piss on them, but I'm sorry. My kids come first. It's not authoritarian when you declare war on someone and attack them that, that, that we, through the legal system, attack back. And I'm just saying now, we have to really be honest. I'll just be honest. Uh, as long as he keeps the Bill of Rights and Constitution in place, if Trump encamps the first, third, and fourth army around the frickin' White House and starts having grand juries arrest 5,000 people, I'm, I mean, we need Nuremberg trials, and I'm, I mean, we need juries, and then we need frickin' public hangings, man. I'm serious. We need thousands of people to be hung from their necks until they're dead. I'm sorry. But I've just, I've got to be honest about what I really see politically here to, to, to not just sit here and watch these people pull all this crap anymore and, and radicalize Muslims. They killed 300,000 people, almost all of them Christians, as you know, in Syria. That's our government. That's the evil people running things. And so I just can't sit here while they're attacking us and put up with it anymore. What do you say to that? Well, I, I agree. It is time to be on the offensive. We need to be proactive. We need to be vocal, and, but of course we need to protect our own privacy at the same time. So I think people should be very selective about when and where uh, they, they, they do their fighting. People need to, if you're going to be in, in the public sphere, you need to, to do so in a way where you can maintain your privacy. That means letters to the editor. That means um, broadside campaigns. That means micro-broadcasting. There's all kinds of different things that people can do where they can be fully... I agree. Micro-broadcasting is key. It's time to get aggressive, folks. You've got to get mo motivated like you're literally... Your life depends on it because it does. You've got... Look, look what I've done in 20-something years. Look what James has done reaching tens of millions. You've got to get aggressive, people. You have to take it personal that you're under attack. I don't... How do we get people out of their comfort zone? It's starting to happen, but just really feel it viscerally. Because I see it, I feel it, man. I take it like somebody's punching me in the nose every morning. I'm pissed. How do we get that telegraph to other people? Well, we need to wake people up. Uh, there's still people who have never heard of your show, for example, or, or the alternative uh, media that's out there. We need to wake up our friends, our neighbors, our relatives, our coworkers, our fellow church congregants, and get them fully, in, fully informed and fully engaged in the process because without them we really you know it granted three percent of the american population were was actively involved in the war for independence but it takes a lot of support it takes a, a, a good chunk of the population alive awake aware 
And and, and, and and let's be honest, we have a lot of great veterans. Like this. Sure, let's be honest, we have a lot of great veterans. I'm going to skip this network breaks, we have more time. We have a lot of great veterans, but they're nothing compared to the French and Indian War veterans, all a bunch of badass mountain men who weren't trying to act tough, they just were. I mean, what a perfect generation to found this country. Well, they, they were indeed, but we still have a lot of those same strengths written into our DNA. We still have a citizenry that's fairly intelligent, fairly healthy, compared to third world standards, we're incredibly healthy. And we have a, a citizenry with the means, we actually have one of the, the wealthiest societies on the planet. We have a citizenry with the means to make a difference because we're not starving to death. If you look at most of the third world despotism that goes on, it's only successful because your average citizen is spending 99% of their time just worried about their survival. And they do that by design, and they're trying to bring that system here to America and to Europe. And I mean, how big a deal is it that, that, that Le, Le, Le Pen looks like she's going to probably win? Uh, Brexit, Russia pulling out. I mean, uh, nationalism's rising worldwide. So, uh, you know, all these evil skexies of the New World Order have got their work cut out for them. They, they do indeed. We, you know, the, the, the forces of freedom and liberty are on the rise. The, the, the powers that be really, if, if they're not, they really should be quick, quaking in their boots at this point because the, the, the rise of nationalism is a natural reaction to the forced globalization that people saw happening. And the Brexit vote and the recent election of Trump, I think, are just prime examples uh, that the citizenry is waking up. They're weather vanes. We are winning the information war. And we need to we need to just press on and again we need to have contingency plans. We need to have those beans, bolts, and band-aids squared away. But please folks do not shy away from the political process, from public discourse, and from exposing and shaming the people who are attempting to enslave us. James Leslie Rawls, our guest. Um, this video clip I'm about to play from 60 Minutes is fair use to analyze it here, and I intend to legally fight for this if copyright claims are made by CBS and Viacom. This video is from 60 Minutes uh, more than 15 years ago. It's George Soros in a 60 Minutes whitewash about how he was a Nazi collaborator. And he says in the video that he doesn't have any remorse of it. He's quite proud of himself how he survived. I mean, he put a gun to my head and said, round up people and help us rob folks. We'll shoot you in the head. I'd say, pull the freaking trigger. You know, it, it, and I've talked to all the folks who go, well, don't bash Soros. He had to do what he did to live. It, it, no, he got off on it. The guy is fundamentally evil. And so this clip has been taken off the web. And then suddenly it reappeared like a month ago. There's like a million and a half views on this one YouTube channel. Uh, so I'm very glad somebody dug it up. Somebody found it. But there's actually two interviews. We haven't found the other one where he was on another channel. And, and it was like, I'm quite proud I survived. So this is the weird freak that is behind so much of what we deal with. And I, that's all I'm saying. We don't want nuclear war. We don't want world collapse. We don't want it. We don't want it. You committed crimes. And, and look, Trump, I'm not going to tell any big secrets here. Because I haven't been given any secrets, but I'm synced in. It's common sense. Trump's waiting to get in, and he understands he has to go after these people. And they're going to demonize him and fight him on every front. We're going to have to support him. But with the Attorney General, like Sessions, you better believe he's delivering. And again... I only talk about things like this that, quite frankly, put myself in major danger with the, with the powers that be because it's the truth. And I cannot sit here and lie to you, folks. We cannot sit here and watch these people commit more crimes and fund more cop killing and just all this evil. We just cannot be part of it. And I'm, I will not sit here. I will not sit here and call for half measures anymore. We could mop these people up very, very quickly. You got free speech all day long, folks. I'm a big libertarian. If you're a foreign globalist trying to overthrow our country, trying to burn cities, you need to be in the bottom of the jail.
Here's George Soros. These are pictures from 1944 of what happened to George Soros's friends and neighbors. You're a Hungarian Jew mm -hmm. who escaped the Holocaust mm -hmm. by posing as a, a Christian. Right. And you watched lots of people get shipped off to the death camps. Right. I was 14 years old. And I would say that that's when my character was made. In what way? That one should think ahead, one should understand and, and anticipate events. Uh, and uh, one, one is threatened. It was a tremendous threat of evil. I mean, it was a, a very personal experience of evil. My understanding is, is that you went out with this protector of yours who swore that you were uh, his adopted godson. Yes, yes. Went out, in fact, and helped in the confiscation of property from the Jews. That's right. Yes. I mean, that's, that sounds uh, like an experience that would send lots of people to the psychiatric couch for many, many years. Was it difficult? Uh, uh, not, not, not at all. Not at all. It, uh, maybe as a child, you don't you don't see the connection, uh, uh, but it was it created no no problem at all. No feeling of guilt. No. For example, that uh, I'm Jewish, uh, and here I am watching these people go. I could just as easily be there. I should be there. None of that. Well, uh, of course, I, uh, I could be on the other side, or I could be the one from whom it, the thing is being taken away. Uh, um, but there was no sense that I shouldn't be there, because uh, that was... Uh, uh, well, actually, funny way, it's just like in markets, that if I weren't there, of course I wasn't doing it, but somebody else would would, would, would be taking it away anyhow. All right, pure doing, evil. Whether I was now, there or now, not. now, now that's a whole whitewash. Okay, that's a whole whitewash. There, he he went around and helped round up thousands of people, stole hundreds of millions of dollars, reportedly, and then sent people their deaths. And the big truth was there were a bunch of Jews like him that would even get Jews to pay them to get out, and they would take the money. Madeleine Albright's father was 20 times, 30 times, I mean, bigger than Soros, uh, rounding up people, robbing Jews, and he was a Jew. So these are really evil people. Uh, James Wesley Rawls, I want to go to break. Five more minutes for you. I know you've got to go. I want to talk about your latest book uh, and where you see all this going. But in 30 seconds, what do you make of that Soros clip? He doesn't want anybody to see that. Well, it certainly shows just how truly despicable, how truly evil people like Soros are, and why we need to be aware, on guard, and we need to be proactively countering. That's right, stay there. Because all he said was, I chose to be the winner. I, I sided with the Nazis. See, see, how, see how psychopathic that is? I mean, this guy Thank stands for nothing. GCN. He stands for nothing. This he thinks GCN we're weak. Because we stand for something. <laughs> Survivalblog.com's his website, James Wesley Rawls, best-selling author. Look, I just want to say this. I've never been one of these social justice warriors that wants to virtue signal and to say, I'm the good guy, I'm the great guy. But let me, let's just be clear. We are the good guys, folks. We want free and fair trade. We want open society. We want free association. We want prosperity. We don't get upset seeing somebody else's success as long as it's not at somebody else's expense, criminally. When you hear George Soros in that 60 Minutes clip, which they've tried to expunge from the web, that we'd lost, and thank God somebody found it. There's another one, too, where it's even worse. Where he just says, doesn't matter, I quite enjoyed it. <laughs> it I took the position of the winner and rounded up the Jews. So he gets ADL awards. It's this upside, and then they call Trump anti-Semitic for nothing. So just be glad we're not these people, but it is important just as we celebrate freedom, to absolutely expose the enemy and just all bets are off. They are they are the plague. They are cancer. Uh, we got three minutes left. I appreciate James Wesley Rawls. We have Lord Moncton coming on. Talk about the state of the world, 1776 worldwide. Uh, your latest novel, more information, anything else you'd like to add, my friend? Sure. I'm, well, I'm not really here to just 
promote my own book. No, but you should. I want you to. They're great books. I'd much rather encourage your listeners to get prepared. And I want to have them take full advantage of the resources that are on my website. Again, it's survivalblog.com. It's been out for 11 years. We've been posting daily. So there's tens of thousands of articles, letters, uh, column items about family preparedness, about survival gear. Uh, you name it, it's there. It's all fully searchable. In the upper right-hand corner, there's a search box. And I recommend that people take full advantage of that. If you're interested in water filtration or first aid or food storage or whatever, just type in your searches there. All the information there is free of charge. Please take full advantage of it, folks, because again, time is short. You need to be prepared. You need to stock up, team up, and train up with your friends and neighbors. And again, it's only those who are well prepared and not worried about where they're going to get their next meal. It's only those folks who are going to have their head up and be looking at the big picture when the real threats come along. That's right. Everything the enemy's done is about making us dependent. And so whether it's camping or gardening or rock climbing or jogging, everything we do to improve ourselves and improve others and reach out if you're white especially and to other folks and and, and you know hire them work with them uh get through the comfort barrier and you're going to find that actually the quote minorities are some of the most awake people and are sick of all this crap we have to get culturally involved uh we have to really just fight on every front and realize it's not a burden it's the animating contest of liberty people just want to watch football all day that's not empowering fighting is empowering it's what we're meant to do i just People ask why I'm so alive. It's because I'm fighting. I, I understand I'm under attack. I agree with you, Alex. And, and I want to just stress to your, your listeners and viewers that a lot of what you're looking at at sites like mine might look expensive, but the alternative is, is, slavery. is, uh, is, is pretty, pretty pitiful when you come right down to it, which is staring across the dinner table at, at your kids and saying, well, I'm sorry, I, I didn't stock up on food. I bought a big screen TV instead. Or That's I right. A Being a man means self-sufficient, and none of us are perfect, but it, it's humans must become primitive again to become advanced. Absolutely. I, I think that even if people on a, on a modest budget, even on a fixed budget, retirees or college students or whoever, you can make substantive steps and get well prepared and, uh, you know, by buying food in bulk, for example, you're actually paying less per meal for your food. That's right, then in the future. Exactly Thank money. you so much. Thank you, sir. Survivalblog.com. We are seeing the global rise of something I've called 1776 worldwide. Lord Monckton's talked about a truly democratic global alliance of nations through national sovereignty, mutual respect, um, shared values, promoting the Renaissance. On a planetary scale, true liberalism, writ large. No one can compete with it. It's what created the science, the technology, everything we've got. And it pretty much came from right where he's sitting in the British Isles. There were competing systems, though, that didn't want to have this renaissance and all these choices and all this freedom. As John D. Rockefeller the first said, competition's a sin. we got to shut this down. We can't let this American system continue. But really, it wasn't the American system. As Winston Churchill wrote in the history of the English-speaking peoples, it was what had already been born in England and in Europe continuing on. So now Le Pen is in the lead in polls uh, over in France. Nationalism's exploding. You've got Catalonia pulling out of Spain. You've got the UK and Brexit. And people say, oh, well, they're, they're denying it. They're fighting it. Of course, they're, they're tyrants. It's unelected. But it's the animating contest. And now we're listing the facts that it's unelected and that it's arrogantly saying we're going to have a hard cut with the UK to try to terrorize it into submitting. Did it work when Hitler directed his bombs on civilian targets thinking they would capitulate? These tyrants have some real blind spots. I think this is great. Try to hurt the UK. Try to hurt England. And even folks that are in a mind numb trance are going to wake up. These elites think bullying us and calling us racist and spewing all this crap is going to make us shut up. It makes us get more more vocal. So he joins us to break this down. The huge climate garbage. Um, Mark Moreno is over uh, there in the middle of the Mediterranean. 
in Morocco. And they, the, the UN police robbed him of his paperwork and threw him out in the desert. Uh, it's just Obama's running around saying, shut down fake news. They're saying arrest Lord Moncton. The 15 attorney generals have been meeting to cook this up. Uh, they're going to authoritarianism. The good news is, what are they going to do with the President Trump? And again, as soon as they try to fight him, Nigel Farage told me months ago in, 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 uh, at dinner in Cleveland, he said, listen, don't worry. I'm giving them a chance. If they do the right thing and don't try to screw over the will of the British people, I want to spend time with my family. I want nothing more, Alex, to not, you know, to be able to, after 20-something years, to stop this, okay? I'm a free market guy. I'm sick of it. But don't worry. They're going to screw us over, so I'll be back. He said that on the show, too. Well, he's back. I'm like, he broke his promise not to come back. No, he said, I'll, I'll, I won't come back if you just do the basic thing. Now, Lord Mock has been involved in the founding of UKIP as well. Its ideas are spreading. And i got to really give it to England. This isn't some butt-kissing scenario. It's true that it's the progenitor, just as it was the progenitor of 1776. As I spoke to 4,000 people four years ago at Bilderberg, uh, you know, above uh, the uh, palatial manor where they were meeting, I said, 1776 belongs to you, the people of the U.K., that's where it all came from. You, massive support. It's the same thing. Again, the UK leading the way, now in the US, now in France. You can say Russia led the way even more breaking with the globalists, but they did it in their own nationalistic way. It's, it's, it's just a magic time to be alive. So I want to speak big picture with Lord Moncton and where he sees this going, how he thinks they're going to counter strike. But I got to tell you, I've been in some movies. I've been at the biggest Hollywood parties. I haven't been to Hollywood in five, six years because you can't get me there anymore. It's so boring. There's nothing there. I don't get stars in my eyes, butterflies, none of it. I could care less. But when I talk to people like Lord Moncton, who is the quiet voice in the wilderness 20-something years ago exposing global warming as a fraud, all proven in triplicate, and people like Nigel Farage, like a George Washington in the UK, and Ron Pauls, and, and President Trump, uh, he doesn't pat me on the head. He calls up and says, well, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? It shows that the return of common sense and decency is here. And all the people that wanted to sabotage the West, who was only trying to build up the world, their day, I think, has pretty much come. But like Hitler in the bunker, they're not giving up. So what do we do? They want to arrest us. As he's, Lord Monk has pointed out, these are a lot of these are foreign nationals like Soros and people openly funding movements to burn down cities, kill cops. I'm not an authoritarian. I'm a super liberal. It's my problem. But at a certain point, they're trying to overthrow our fundamental system. That's sedition. Now, he might, he might correct me if he thinks I'm wrong under common law. But Lord Moncton, thank you for joining us. That's a large palette I've thrown out there. But uh, well, greetings and great, salutations. Well, um it, what a wonderful moment to be alive as we see, first of all, Brexit and then the Trump double whammy. And the left just don't know what hit them. I was at King's College, Cambridge, which is a communist college at an increasingly communist university, at my old alma mater. And at King's College, Cambridge, there were a hundred undergraduates in the politics society, and we had a debate. And I was on the side of Mr. Trump, and the other four speakers were not. That is the kind of balanced debate at Cambridge these days, four against one. And I said to them, right, how many of you would have voted for Brexit if you could or did vote for Brexit? And I predicted that less than 10% of them would. In fact, it was five. So I said, all right, how many of you think that spending on defense should be increased to reverse the enormous and dangerous cuts of previous decades? And I predicted less than 5% would agree to that. It was three. So I said, all right, how many of you think that immigration ought to be more rigorously controlled? I predicted 5%, 2%. And how many of you, I said, think that climate change has been just that little bit exaggerated? 1%, I predicted 5 again. So what we're looking at here is an ideological monoculture, a hive mind of the left, where they all think the same about every major bone of political contention. And they have this robotic uniformity of view. And I said to them, why is it that you are so predictable? Why is it that you don't see any point to Trump and to Brexit and to this movement 
where ordinary people, and these days increasingly it's working people. That's right. They don't even respond to giant enough, total defeats. Enough. They don't even they don't even respond to giant crushing defeats. They're just totally delusional. Well, this, this, of course, is, is very evident in the measures you see being proposed by the left to make sure that Trump doesn't actually become president. They've been nobbling the members of the Electoral College, trying to get them to change their votes away from what the Constitution would expect them to do. And that, I think, will fail. I think he has a large enough majority there that even though there'll be a few wobblers, he'll still carry the day very clearly. I think it's towards the end of December they do that. And that was their first thing. The next thing, as you were mentioning just a moment ago, they turn out on the streets and start throwing things and they start rioting because they can't accept the will of the people in a democratic system if the will of the people doesn't happen to agree with them. And look how remarkable it was. After all, all the advantages were with Hillary Clinton. She outspent Trump approximately two to one. She had virtually every mainstream, or as I call it, Mark stream news medium on her side. She had all that going for her. She had all the young people, all the universities. She had all the blacks and Hispanics, who, of course, are becoming more and more numerous as immigration fails to be controlled properly. For all these reasons, she should, by any analysis, have won this and won it hands down. But as you're saying, and blacks and Hispanics voted for Trump in record numbers. They did indeed. And this, this I think, shows a very welcome change in the Hispanic. I've been watching this for some time. They are much more entrepreneurial and free market minded than the blacks are. Let's be clear about it. They do see things differently. And a very large proportion of them did vote for Trump, whereas the blacks were pretty solidly for Clinton. And I think this does show an interesting change in demographic, and one of the things that Grand Old Party is going to have to do is to try to find a way to talk to the blacks as well. It's already done the Hispanics, largely through people like Ted Cruz, of course, but now it needs to do the same for the black vote, so as to cut off all the major areas of support that the so-called Democrats once had. I think they are crumbling. And the reason why they're crumbling is that they are, in particular, they've lost their connection with the working classes. And they're Just nasty bastards. Party has here. Hmm? And they're nasty bastards. Well, of course, that goes without saying. But what is fascinating is that they've thrown away the one priceless advantage they had, which is that working people used to vote left, and they don't anymore. One sure, let me interject this. Stephen Bannon. What Nigel Farage did was, was to um, attract voters from the working classes, particularly in the north of England. He's saying, look, what have the left ever actually done for you? What has the European Union done for you? Look about you. It hasn't changed anything very much. So for heaven's sake, vote UKIP, and then we'll get rid of the EU, and that leaves a lot more money for our government to spend in areas in the North. And that's Indonesia. my next question. And the EU would ever help. Yeah, go on. That's my next question. Clearly, when you have WikiLeaks coming out, clearly when you see how truly nasty these hundreds of thousands of emails are like you'd have to work even if you were a demon to write this nasty and this hateful but it shows it's really a college of scumbags that have bad will and they're just manipulating people and it was Stephen Bannon's plan uh, to actually cut taxes on the poor people regardless of what color they are and deliver a program uh, where Trump's going to go into the black areas he's going to do tax incentives he's going to do the tax cuts and deliver and try to break the will and the future takeover of the Marxist Democratic Party. And I see it happening. I mean, I see total victory if Trump presses and does not back down. And I think he absolutely must appoint an attorney general, which he's doing, that will prosecute the Clintons. It's not vindictiveness. It's not authoritarian, they say, if we want them prosecuted. They've committed massive crimes. They must be prosecuted.
I think the, the first thing is, let's, let's start with Steve Bannon, whom you mentioned there. Uh, I met him when I was last in the States, um, uh, sort of six or nine months ago. I was very impressed with him and was very glad when he, I, I had had some warning this was going to happen, but he eventually ended up pretty much masterminding Trump's campaign. And as a reward for having succeeded in that, he's now his chief strategist. Now, of course, what you do have to worry about, and this is something that Ron Reagan got wrong. I was talking to the chairman of his Council of Economic Advisors a few years ago, and he said, wasn't it a wonderful era? I said, yes, except for one thing. And he said, what? I said, Ron Reagan reduced taxes, but he didn't reduce the spending That's of right. the federal government as well. And you have to do both. both. You cannot do the one without the other, or you will increase what is already a desperately serious problem, both sides of the Atlantic. And we've got to be very clear about this. It was the one sensible thing that any of the lefties on that panel at King's College said, one of the lecturers who was on their side, he said the biggest crisis that's coming is a crisis of overborrowing by governments. I was amazed that the left winger was now willing to say sure, this. Sure, and how close is, is that crisis? What, I mean, how close is that crisis? Very difficult to say when it's going to happen. Uh, what we can say is that it will happen. There's now no way out. And if you look back in history, no country as heavily indebted as the United States or the United Kingdom as a percentage of GDP has ever recovered its position. Exactly. So, so how do we recover if it's never been done? I mean, Mexico defaulted well, once, it was over. It's never been done without violent revolution. That's right, without a war. And what is going to happen now is a test of the strength of our national cohesiveness, strength of our institutions, as to whether we can buck the trend and deal with this debt problem without adding to it, as Ron Reagan added massively to it. And Margaret Thatcher began by adding massively to it, simply because the previous government had made spending commitments that it took us time to undo. When we did undo them, we, for the first time in 200 years, started paying back the national debt. And there was virtually no political opposition to this. If you do it right, it's one of the things I very quietly did while I was in Downing Street, it was so that we were making these massive cuts and people didn't even miss the fact that we were no longer spending things. And that's the trick. If you're going to cut taxes, as we did under Margaret Thatcher, you must also cut the spending of the sure. federal government. And uh, this, is, this is where I slightly worry that Trump is saying we can do it all from the supply side. We can just um, allow lots of money into the economy and hope that uh, everything takes off and then uh, the greater tax revenues will, will bail us out. That has never worked. It never will work. You can buck many trends as he has, but you can't buck that one. Sure, well, the word is he's going to try to hold it the same. The great, what about holding the same? It's going to have to follow. What about holding the same then? Well, if he, if he held spending the same as it is now, America is just going to go under because uh, Obama has damn near tripled the national debt in the U.S. and it took 100 years to accumulate. So very, very serious economic sure. mismanagement, fiscal mismanagement by the Obama regime. And that's on purpose. Let me add this then. Because clearly... Well, I mean, it probably is, but, sure. but let, let, me, let me be very clear about this. Uh, the responsibility of Mr. Trump now is to say that because Mr. Obama was reckless and feckless with the economy and with the Treasury, now there's going to have to be a tightening, and the tightening is going to have to come in the federal government in Washington, D.C. Let me give you one really useful figure. Ninety-three percent of the voters in Washington, D.C. voted for Clinton. Only 4% voted for Trump. Well, now it's payback time, and it's payback time not for the sake of vengeance, but for the sake of balancing the books. What he's got to do is to cut the federal administration to ribbons. How is he going to pay for uh, these tax cuts that he wants to make? Apart from just not employing so many bureaucrats, the other thing he can do is let us have a look. About 30% of the land area of the United States is federal owned land. Now, my copy of the Constitution says that apart from 10 square miles in the District of Columbia, and apart from a few properties on which forts and ports might be constructed, the federal government has no constitutional right to own land at all. Now, what Mr. Trump should do is sell it off. 
sell it off big time in a series of phased sales to put the land back in the hands of the people and the money back in the Treasury to pay off the massive debt that Obama ran up. And the Democrats won't be able to resist this. They'll want to, but they can't. This will be the biggest denationalization in the history of the world. If you defederalize the land and don't let it go back to the states, let it go back to private individuals and corporations. It'll create the biggest boom ever. It would be an enormous boom. I mean, the amount of money you'd raise would be colossal. You would break the power of the federal government. And then you've got to also be very drastic in dealing with bodies like the EPA. Now, under the Interstate Commerce Clause, again in the Constitution, there should be no EPA. The EPA is a constitutional abortion. It shouldn't exist. Let me stop now, you there. there Let me stop you there. The EPA does that, that ought to be done. Sure. For instance... Sure. They, they should be monitoring pollution and so on. But that should not be done federally. It should be done at state level. And the EPA should be shut down. Sure. And if you start shutting down these duplicating federal agencies that are against your constitution, are riddled with leftists, and are very expensive, and the EPA is doing its damnedest to close America down, well, close the EPA down, and America can be open for business once again. That's right, and Lord Moncton joins us from England uh, via Skype. It duplexes, he can't hear me a lot when I talk, so that's why it sounds like we're talking over each other, but just interjecting here about the epic moment we've reached. I just want to get your view on the fact that yourself, Nigel Farage, who came and coached Trump the last few debates, Trump admitted really helped him, uh, you know, go after the nationalism, the anti-globalism, Americanism, not globalism. Just, I mean, we should take stock of how big our victory's been. Globalism is in crisis. And, and then really understand, they want a consolidated economy where the tax-exempt corporations can thrive. It's a new form of feudalism, and then everybody else implodes. I mean, I think really we have to just get to the point of exposing the fact that this is a criminal consolidation conspiracy. Let me stop you just there, because what you've just mentioned, in fact, is fascism, where a few favored corporations are allowed to get very rich and everybody else is paying through the nose for it. That is fascism. And that, of course, is one aspect of the current so-called Democrat Party. The other aspect, of course, is outright communism. And these two forms of leftism are different sides of the same coin. And the remarkable thing is that the, the electorate has, to an astonishing degree, rejected this, uh, these 20th century, outdated, failed, and murderous... And the rejection is accelerating. When you think that fascism and communism in the 20th century killed 250 million people between them, and that already we're now killing another 6 to 10 million every year by policies to make climate change go away when it's hardly happening anyway. And those policies are killing 6 to 10 million people a year by denying them the right to have electricity that we can take for, for granted. So the left are continuing their war on humanity. And I think humanity is beginning to wake up to this. And one of the reasons, what you were talking about, the sheer nastiness of the left, one of the reasons why the left are now in such retreat is that people can see that they are nihilistic. They are destructive. They are killing people by the tens of millions. Now there are no longer jackboots marching in the streets. There are no longer open annexation of foreign countries. What you get instead is this insidious new globalized policy making, which you see at the Marrakesh conference ludicrously, where Mark Morano, because he dared... To we'll talk about that when we come back. How they're going to counter-strike. Lord Mark, we got to go to break. Stay with us. We'll be back. Infowars.com we are back live. Lord Moncton's our guest. I'll be back tomorrow live. I intend to just take phone calls the entire broadcast tomorrow. The good news is good people, once they get cornered, stand up and kick the ass of the tyrants. The problem is the West has created such fabulous wealth and opportunity that there are all these spoiled brats that have inherited all this and they sit around bitching. And there are communist rallies now. Just, I mean, traffic shut down routinely every week. I can't go anywhere. There's buses by the hundreds, hundreds of buses and people running around. They had a 
black memorial at the state capitol yesterday and the communists showed up flipping out with their firearms. And the issue is, we fight for that right to have firearms, then they use it even though they want to get rid of it. So here's what I'm trying to get at. It's the best of times, worst of times, to tell two cities. But those of us that are not tyrants do not seek power. But we have to seek power as a responsibility to protect our families. And I'm, I get so excited here on air. I'm jumping in over you know, Lord Moncton, all the great work he's done. Because this is a thousand times more important than some football game or soccer game. These are horrible people that want to sew up humanity forever, reduce the language to a 1984 level. And I sit back and study their own writings where they're admitting this. It's so cold-blooded. It's so horrific. How could we not defeat it? We're going to go back to Lord Moncton right now. But all I can tell you is this. I was back there with my producers during this break. We have a stack of news articles I'm going to cover on the Nightly News tonight where Democrats are uninviting their children that voted for Trump or not going to Thanksgiving. And I personally have experienced friends that I've known who I tolerated, who I've known for 30 years, tell me, oh, I'm not coming to your party. You voted for Trump. And I'm like, you were a Democrat. I put up with you all these years. It was always nice to you. Didn't dehumanize you. And I'm like, you know what? I'm never talking to you again. This was your choice. But I love how tolerant libertarians and patriots are, right-wingers, whatever they call us. And then these people are so intolerant. And, I mean, it's bad, folks. I had a guy brandish a gun at me at a restaurant Saturday morning. Before that, someone came over and said, it's on video. We were doing a live stream and said, F you, Alex Jones. They are flipping out. Lord Moncton, what do you make of this? I mean, do you agree with what I'm saying or where do you see this going? I think this is this is very, very typical of the left now. They are not in any real sense Democrats. They don't believe in the popular vote unless by their power in the media they can manipulate it and, of course, by massive voter fraud. Even that wasn't big enough to, to get it for them this time. Yeah, they stole and five states. Trump still won. I hope they clean up. So Trump still won. And, of course, they're furious. And what should we do about this? What we've got to do is to make it clear to them that they either shape up and sharpen up and get back with democracy and start understanding that the will of the people in a republic that is democratic is sovereign or they can get out of politics altogether and go and grow vegetable marrows. They can't pretend that they like democracy when they don't. And one of the reasons why they lost is that people are beginning to realize that the left hate democracy because every so often, as it has this time, it allows somebody else a turn at the levers of government. And they are increasingly intolerant of that. It's partly propaganda. It's a cult of power. And universities. And this is where I want to talk about the Freedom Force International Congress. That's right. You've got a big event coming up. Tell us about that. An, an inconvenient yeah. live Freedom Force International Climate Conference. That's right. Now, this is taking place at the Marriott Tempe at the Butte Hotel. It's just a few miles away from Sky Harbor Airport in Phoenix, Arizona, from the 2nd to the 4th of December. And I will be there. And I want to, uh, to meet uh, as many Alex Jones fans as can get there. So I want you to get hold of the organizers now. You can see the details there on screen and make sure that you make a booking and come and meet me in Phoenix. There will be some of the most interesting climate professors and scientists there. There'll be uh, lay researchers like me. I will be making a, a major announcement about this big error that my team have discovered in the climate models and you take the error away and the climate scare disappears overnight. I'll be explaining all that. This will be a major blowback against this so-called Democrat, but in fact, anti-democratic left-wing movement that you see throwing things in the street, setting fire to things. And by the way, what I love, when you say you have a major um, announcement, it's always huge. I love the fact it's this, like this, you're this always, you, very, you very deliver. Good. Yeah, th this one 
uh, could blow the whole thing out of the water. There's going to be enormous resistance, I think, to getting it published in any peer-reviewed journal, but we're working on that. Sure. And if we succeed, then effectively that's the end of the climate scare. They're all going to have to run away in humiliation. Sure, well, let's put your website on screen for TV viewers, but for radio listeners, uh, you're obviously at whatsupwiththat.com, but science and public policy dot o-r-g uh, but but, but like, we, we, we've won on the science the authoritarians admit they're losing they're still moving forward let me ask you this you yeah. the, 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 according to the times of london the top advisor to margaret thatcher great lady and you've been you were seeing this over the horizon for a long time now it's here um i don't understand the bad will of the so-called leftists i don't understand their nastiness their their own white papers admitting they want to make us poor in WikiLeaks and calling black people dumb scum and and just you know if I'm going to tell if I'm going to call somebody a name I'm going to say it's their damn face I don't know how we've produced such a group of filth and I don't want to just call them filth but we need to decry them like syphilis I mean these are well, nasty think, let horrible let people who are they blunter. let us be even blunter the truth is that the left today what they stand for is in every respect evil it is to quote the former chancellor of the exchequer under margaret thatcher nigel lawson it is wicked it is evil it is of the devil as we say in the catholic church it is though it is uh, it is literally if you look at all the things they stand for this climate thing is based on a lie and a lie is a pretty serious sin against the way the universe is supposed to operate the they, they favor homosexuality, they favor divorce, they favor abortion. All of these things lead to disruption of lives. They, and fa of they, they favor non-commitment. All of the things they favor, they favor running up massive debts and destroying the, the, the economy. They favor uh, fighting a war against coal to destroy... Yes, why do they love uh, mismanagement and collapse? Why do they love disorder? Because that is the devil. You see, if you, if you go right back to Catholic theology, the, the ancient Christian theology, there is a clear understanding that there is, just as there is such a thing as absolute good, so as its opposite, there is a such a thing as absolute evil. And you can either take the side of the good and try to do the right thing, or you can take the side of evil and try to do the wrong thing. Now, in the past, there were some good points in the left and some good points in the right, and you kind of, it didn't, the religion didn't really come into it. That's but right. Now what, have, now what you have is a very clear divide between good on the right and wickedness and, and, and straightforward naked evil on the left. And I was uh, talking the other day to Sir Robert Armstrong, who had been the head of the Home Civil Service, Secretary to the Cabinet, uh, during most of the Thatcher years. And he, was, he used a very interesting word about the Thatcher government. He said it was a good government. I said, what do you mean by good? He said, I mean good in every sense. He said it was morally good. He said, none of you meant anyone any harm. He said, in my experience in working with governments of all stamps, that's unique. He said, normally people get into gov government and they want to do down some category of their opponents or another. He said, there was nothing of that in any of you. He said, it was quite remarkable. And this really is the difference between us on the center right and them on the left, that we mean nobody any harm and they wish harm to many, many, many sure. of their fellow human beings. They wish harm and they plot to achieve harm. They, they are plot to do things that are, objectively speaking, evil. They are wicked. Let me bring this and up then. Why is it fundamentally studying them that they're physically ugly, black, white, doesn't matter, they're twisted, and none of us are perfect, but they seem to have a hate of themselves, so they seem to be projecting it onto the world, and any form of success they claim is some fraud against humanity, but all they but deliver all is death. This, all of this, if one reads, say, the, uh, there's an enormous um, theology of how demons behave. Uh, you could read, for instance, the Malleus Maleficarum, the Hammer of the Witches, the various books like this, which go into how Satan behaves. You can read the Bible, large chunks in both testaments on this, and you see these satanic, these downright wicked,
characteristics coming through in the extreme left. Astounding. Let me add this everybody point. Everybody who voted Democrat is going to go to hell, or everybody is a Satanist, or everybody is a devil. No, of course not. Let's be sensible here. What I am saying is that a lot of the policies they advocate are, objectively speaking, downright. The theology is satanic. Let me. Let me just add, add this point then. We mentioned left and right. Until 200 years ago or even 170 years ago, right meant good, strong God, left-hand path with Satan. And then you look at the Jacobins, as you've talked about in France, kind of the proto-system we see today of the communists, which they admit is the, is, the, is, is, the, is the originator of that, the progenitor. There is a true push towards Satanism and so I'm somebody, I wouldn't say I was an atheist, I was brought up a Christian, I believe in God, I love God. But you know, you're like 20 years old, you question it all. But as I went further down the rat, the rat hole, or, or rabbit hole, studying these people, they, they almost universally festoon themselves with Baphomet, love the devil, tell us they're of the devil, uh, just are like nasty people. And I just, well, it's just weird, is this genetic it's, it's or is it really spiritual? This glorification of wickedness on the left. And I think we've been a little bit too soft. We haven't said what I'm saying now as bluntly and plainly as I am saying it now. And I'm saying this not because I hate them or I wish them harm. I'm saying it because they wish us harm. They wish the world harm. And it is time... Yeah, they want to cut expert. off the carbon and kill a billion people. All of that. And, they're, you know, they're killing probably a holocaust at the absolute minimum, possibly two, every year because they're denying them electricity. You know, if you'd had the international community now meeting in Marrakesh last year, it was Paris, if you had them meeting instead to make sure that everyone on the planet had an electricity supply and therefore could have a clean water supply, decent sewerage, decent basic health care, decent basic education. They could have some light to read by at night for their studies. This could transform the third world countries, lift them out of the kind of perma-poverty that the left has flung them into and make them as prosperous as we. Let me stop you and again. If that, and if that happens, the population of the world will stabilize the net environmental benefit of doing uh, the kindness to these poor people of lifting them out of their poverty. This is a, unqualified, a good thing, and yet the implacable opponents of it are the left over and over and over again. And they have diverted the attention of the international community away from sorting out poverty. And by the way, Lord Moncton... And, and, and instead, they're, they're miring into this climate change nonsense, which is simply a way of, again, trying to destroy the prosperous Western economies to the advantage of nobody. That's right. So, so adding to this, this isn't rhetoric. When you really study these people, they're anti-progress, but they want all the wealth and power and innovation. It's just a, it's a fundamental greediness. And I just can't believe they're so bad. And I think that's our blind spot is decent people how do we then if we have this blind spot what do we do to make sure we defeat them and and, and what are other countermeasures you see Where, where's the next big fight because if the world's turning against globalism turning against soros the carbon tax do they start a new war do they fund a new arab spring how do they how do they attack the next the next big fight is going to be an internal one in the Western democracies because of the staggering indebtedness that has been caused largely by left-wing policies. And this indebtedness is becoming impossible to sustain. We talked of this earlier. That's going to be the next battleground. And the, the faction that is going to dominate politics in the next 50 years will be the faction that is able to produce, as we did under Margaret Thatcher, a credible workmanlike answer to that. I mean, I was approached the other day and somebody said, would you like to be, uh, you know, have a job in the Trump administration? And of course, the one thing that I would like to do in the Trump administration is do what I quietly did for Margaret Thatcher, which is to exercise a steady, quiet invisible, gentle, downward pressure on the spending of the federal government. I know how to do that. I did it for Margaret Thatcher. And that's what I would really like to do for Donald Trump, because otherwise he won't be able to afford his tax-cutting splurge.
And he will simply find that, as Ron Reagan found, uh, the indebtedness rises rapidly and you don't end up doing as much good as you wanted. So th that's what I would like to do. And that's where the next battleground is going to be. It's on, it's on whether or not we can break the grip of the left on the federal finances and get rid of these 93% in the District of Columbia who voted for Clinton, pull in some people from outside who are not committed to communism and try to reform the federal finances because otherwise the money is going to run out sure. and, and, and not read... all that far from now. I mean, it's very difficult. You asked me earlier, how, how, how long will it be? But it won't be long from now. And the danger, if America continues down her present route of massive overspending and therefore continually having to cut things she once spent money on, like defense, is that America is gradually becoming weaker and weaker around the world. You sure, have let me Russia, add this. I'm going to skip this final the break. Siberian gas becoming very prosperous. You have uh, and you paying anti-fracking groups in Europe to make sure they can go on overcharging the um, uh, the Europeans for their gas to, to keep the Russian military going. You have China, massive military expansion. We have to match that so that they realize they cannot simply trust Sure, us. Lord Monkton, we're almost out of time here. I got a minute or two left with you. Just a, as a nationalist position, the communist Chinese are the biggest killers in history uh, uh, against their own poor people. Yeah. I don't know if you saw it, but it, it literally has been in every major newspaper. I got one this Saturday and was on the cover. China demands U.S. stop online hate. This is the biggest censors, the biggest murderers ever. They're saying shut down alternative. Yeah, shut down Alex Jones, shut down Matt Drudge, shut down DrudgeReport.com, Infowars.com. The, the 15 attorney generals are meeting wanting to arrest Mark Moreno and you. This is in newspapers. They, they're doing this with a straight face. And we're sitting here watching all this. So looking at this and, and, and their open authoritarianism, to me, it's otherworldly. If the communist Chinese are in the Wall Street Journal ordering our government to shut down the new media because we're kicking their ass... And Obama's giving speeches all over the world saying, well, Trump got elected because of fake media. And he even says this by name now. So does Hillary. That is just over the top wild. I mean, it shows they want to go full authoritarian, which tells but me. It every also shows one thing from which you should take both comfort and pride, Alex. And that is that you did make a material difference to the vote. You're uh, speaking out in favor of freedom, okay. As you know, I tease you from time to time because you go over the top. But given the pressure under which we on the centre-right are being put, one forgives you that. But you and those like you, like Matt Drudge and so forth, like uh, Steve Bannon, of course, and, and Breitbart, who had the courage to buck the trend of universal Marxism in the media, the, the Marx stream media, and instead to give an alternative view, which won't necessarily always be congenial to China. Well, that's what freedom is all about. And because of you, Alex Jones, and because of InfoWars and Prison Planet, because of these enterprises of freedom that you have set up as a voice of freedom, it is because of this voice of freedom that freedom has found itself again, and that's why Trump got elected. So don't feel upset that they attack you, that when they attack you, then they're paying you the compliment of saying it was you that helped to put Trump where he is. And you can bet that Steve Bannon knows this, that Trump knows this, that people like Myron Ebel, you know, the, the, the team he's gathering around him, they know this. They know that you have been standing up for no, freedom. No, I've, 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 I've talked to those folks. I'm going to stop there. But that's what's yeah, so that's surreal is that's why I know Trump's for real. He's not patting me on the head when he calls me or other people do. They're, they're for real. The thing is, Trump's been so business focused. He's super smart in a lot of areas. In other areas, you know, he wants to like work with government like it's a business and like thinks he can just get them to work with him. He doesn't understand how now. I think he does, but I, I don't want to underestimate his smarts. He's smarter than I am, but I tell you, God, they're bad. What he's done is, I mean, in picking Steve Bannon as his chief strategist, that was, that was a brilliant appointment. Steve has been uh, working p privately with them for really quite some time. But I was delighted when he moved in to kind of take over the campaign, still more delighted when he was appointed as Trump's um, advisor-in-chief, effectively. And 
he will make sure that if if anything needs to be known about how politics works and how to play that there's nobody cleverer than steve bannon at that so he's what trump has always been good at as as every successful businessman has to be good at is bringing good people into work delegating this is the, exactly that, and finding the good people, and and he's doing that, and he's doing it uh, to my mind very successfully, very quickly, and so I'm not at all worried about whether the Trump presidency will be a competent presidency. I'm quite sure it will. I have one or two worries, as you know, about the financial Taxes. side, fiscal side, all of that, but uh, I think that that's where I could help them. I could show them how. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure he wants to talk to you. Let me ask you this in closing, then. Yeah. What happens if they kill Trump? Because they've got Time Magazine, the New York Times, LA Times, every paper basically calling for his death. No one goes to jail. I mean, that's not free speech. If I call for someone's death with 30 million listeners, I should go to jail. That's well, not free speech. Britain, of the, so they're calling for his death. What if yes, they get in Britain, it? In Britain, you would go to jail for that. That is still an offense here. Incitement to murder, it's called. It is also an offense under your code. And what I would recommend, and this is something which... I think on the whole that the center right have been too relaxed about is that what you have to do is to get clear evidence where they do say these things and call for these remedies and go to the police and demand a prosecution. I agree. So we have go to demand to prosecutions. Time. We can't just let them make the threats at the LA Times or the New York Times. We've got to go, hey, grand jury, indict this son of a bitch. Now, here's a question you might be able to answer. Uh, is it possible for private citizens to call together a grand jury, or is it only in the power of the prosecutors to do that? Uh, it, it varies state to state, whether it's federal or local, and I'm just going from a gestalt memory. But when the president's involved, it affects every citizen that's a registered voter. I, I mean, I think citizens can demand it. Well, if we can demand and impanel a grand jury, I have a long list of crimes they need to look at, including all these death threats to Trump, which are being made in, in papers like the Los Angeles. Hell, they're death threatening me every 10 seconds. Well, uh, that too, every time that happens, nobody does it to me because they know I go straight to the police. And they know that if anyone tries to make a death threat against me, uh, they'll find themselves in jail in two shakes of a duck's tail. They don't dare. And the problem is that you have... So you're right, we can't roll over to it. We've got to press charges. You have to press charges and you have to start working this jury system. You see, in Britain, we have the right of private prosecution. If I want to prosecute the state, I can. I've done it on a couple of occasions and I won on both. You got Al Gore's film thrown out. Uh, that was a that was a civil matter, but the, but we can go and and initiate a criminal prosecution. Now the Supreme Court took away that right. It's a very essential right to freedom uh, from uh, American citizens about a hundred years ago, I think. And you need to get that right back. But I am told, and this is why I wanted to know a bit more about the impaneling of grand juries. If that is something that that can be done at the initiative of private citizens, that is another way of achieving. Sure, private right citizens can make a filing. And then grand juries are supposed to look at it. More and more county prosecutors try to hide that, but that is a common law remedy. Well, if that if that is your right, then I think there's a number of things. I, I don't know whether you, you've come across the case of um, uh, Mr. Finnicum, who was, uh, I think, murdered by the FBI. Oh, yeah, and the, and the jury found the folks not guilty. Yeah, it was a horrible murder. Uh, I didn't like the look of that. I must say, I was asked to look into it, and I have looked into it. And, and so far, I am minded to set up an international commission to examine what happened on that day because there are some very clear gaps in the official. Oh, there's testing. video. They shot the car up for no reason. It's, it's, and we're not well, trying to have war with the that. feds. But. So, so there's a lot of this going on. Of course, there's still the matter of Mr. Obama's birth certificate, where Mr. Trump, for various reasons of expediency, decided that he would no longer bang on, bang on about that one. But it is bogus. That one needs to be dealt with. The grand jury on being uh, confronted with the evidence that the sheriff's office has now amassed would, I think, be virtually certain to indict. And so I think that these are some of the things that if we want to fight evil, we must fight them with the weapons of good. And one of the weapons of good is the law courts. That's we right. Are in time Lord Mogden, thank you so much. Scienceandpublicpolicy.org. Great interview. Amazing. We'll be back at the fourth hour. Stay with me. Infowars.com is my show. Spread that link. They hate this broadcast. You heard Lord Monkton. He's a really smart inventor, really successful guy, journalist, you name it, saying, no, these are Satanists. And you can be the Orthodox Church, you can be Catholic, you can be a Buddhist for all that matters. You can recognize evil when you see it. And they always make these big jokes to the media that Jones claims that high-level atheists are actually Satanists. I've experienced it. 
And I was quite honest earlier when I said that, you know, I didn't completely question God, but I thought maybe atheists might be right when I would say 20. But as I, so I didn't have like some dog in the fight. I mean, I hate, I hated being drugged to church three times a week when I was a kid. Bible studies on the, at the house Wednesday nights. Sundays twice, sometimes four times a week. I hated being drugged to the Salvation Army five, six times a year on holidays. Just sit there and, you know, serve soup up to drunk winos. I'm not being mean to the winos. I'm not elitist, but I mean, you know, which old drunk guys with crap running down their legs. It ain't fun. But you know what? My parents were making sure I wasn't soft. But you study the modern liberal and they don't give to charity. They just virtue signal. Because they're not liberals. I am so liberal. I don't say that in a good way, like I'm claiming this mantle. I'm so liberal, it makes my head spin. I mean, I really don't care what you're doing as long as it doesn't hurt somebody else. And folks can say, oh, that guy's sinning, or this is what, just whatever. I got my own stuff to deal with. I'm not trying to win some preacher award up here. I, I, I just fundamentally will not cheat anybody. I won't screw somebody over. And if you study the globalists, their whole worldview is about hurting people. We're in a race, though, a race against the devil, because there are these predators that have just decided to not count humanity as anything and just screw everybody over. And then if, if we actually went with that, if I tried to like screw people over and like be evil, what would that be like? Because I'm a human and I'm screwing over other humans. What does that say about me? I, I, you know, and then these psychopaths, they take it as weakness that I have empathy. So they manipulate me through my empathy and then try to program me to do all the things they want me to do. It's just, it's just crazy. Look, we got David Knight coming up in the next segment. I'll, I'll come back and introduce him. Um, I came down here to do this show today on Monday because I know that humanity needs to be a gold-based, goal-based system. We have to have goals. We have to have things we're shooting for, like a mountain we want to climb or a painting we want to paint or a woman we want to conquest. Notice how they even made that like dirty. Oh, oh, a man wants to conquest a woman. He wants to love her. He wants to take care of her. He wants to hold her next to him. Oh, it's so evil. That magic connection God gave us, all the blessings were given. Everything good has been overturned. Everything that fulfills, everything that's self-sustaining Everything that's self-regenerating is under attack because the globalists are death. They want to scientifically control everything and have seeds that don't produce new seeds. To me, that's the purest, purest form of Satanism. And we said it with the greatest minds alive in the world today, and they all go, I did the analysis, and it appears we're dealing with Satan. And that's it. They're like cancer. If cancer had a consciousness, it would believe it was invincible. It's running through the body. The truth is, it's death. David Knight's about to take over in this fourth hour. I got a few clips I wanted to play and a few things I wanted to finish. And we've got third-party sponsors that make all this transmission possible. You know, there's a great film that Chuck Undersey worked on for five years. And I saw him absolutely kill himself. You know, he was a, a army colonel, and then he did TV ads in, in Hollywood. And he's a great cinematographer. I wouldn't even call him really a filmmaker. And I mean that nicely. I wouldn't call myself a filmmaker. But with Charlie Daniels and all these other great cast, myself and General Boykin and others, he puts something together very special that is beyond film. It's just, it's just reality. And exposes the whole globalist program. Uh, you need to see it. You can go to Revelation the Movie. Dot info. That's revelationthemovie.info to get your 
copy or to schedule a show in your area, revelationthemovie.info. To purchase a DVD or check into hosting it at a theater near you, revelationthemovie.info. Just such an important work they've done. Very, very exciting, and we salute the work of Chuck Undersea and his wife and so many others that were involved in the film. Uh, briefly, we, we, we've we got discounts all throughout this week on Black Friday. Um, like I said, we're really good at getting big audiences. We're not good at making money. And I need to retain the people I've got. I need to be able to hire more folks. It's our responsibility to do this. I can't sleep at night if I don't fight this as hard as I can. That's why I'm shooting videos on Saturday and Sunday night till midnight. Uh, it's because, believe me, your respect, your support of us is a big deal. And uh, we do not take this massive support lightly. I am completely consumed with the animating contest of liberty. So thank you all for your support, your prayers. But just know this, when you send the podcast out or a video out or articles out or just a link to the site, it, it, it moves mountains. And the fact that the President of the United States in four different speeches that I've seen, and there may be more, but in Germany and Greece and Peru and other places, we've got to shut down fake news. Or it's just, you cannot allow it. That means reality. That means the president of the hijackers has to come out and, in some cases, by name, say, shut down Alex Jones. Their surrogates are all over CNN, all over Fox News, saying, shut us down. I'm not a nihilist. I love God. But when they threaten to kill me and stuff, it's like, I would never commit suicide. Let's be clear, I love life. But it's almost like, God, that'd really give me some rest. I... I have this responsibility to fight you so hard. That's, it's like I've transcended even the fear that they have over me. It's like crazy. I'm totally removed from them now. It's like as humanity awakens, the ascendance of our spirits is so powerful that we have to just remember that we're on this plane to take care and help people who are not awake. That's a real sacrifice. Sure, we get it. We understand the game. We understand what they're doing, but we have to... Take the people that are like children and rise them up. We can get pissed off because we have the knowledge of good and evil. We can sit there and see how this is working and say, why can't? Why don't you see it? But think back when you weren't awake. Think back when you didn't have the different angles. You were stupid too. So was I. I I'll just say this. I love Jesus Christ. And I can't imagine if I've already got this much discernment and understanding about the secrets of the universe... I'm only 42 years old. What will it be like when I've shuffled off this mortal coil and with Christ? The eye's not seen, the ear's not heard, my friends. It's big. It's a big opportunity we're all involved in. And God just wants to see that you're not a parasite and that you're not out to get innocent people. And you make that choice. You do that. It's not even that God judges you. It's that you choose whether you want to be with God or with these parasites that are so nasty and evil, it wounds us to even look at them. I understand all that. But I just want to thank the viewers and listeners for your support, your prayers. Everything you've done has made this possible. And we can now officially say, not to brag, but because the fact must be stated, that InfoWars, as a media outlet and as a radio show, is the biggest radio slash TV program in the world. More than RT, more than CNN, more than Fox News. As a transmission, as of 2016, in the fall, in the winter, it's not about a pissing contest. It's just the fact that I have to announce to you that we are now number one. And that is a testament to the power of God and the power of truth and the power of resistance against evil. As imperfect vessels as we are, stacked up against the traitors at CNN and MSNBC, we're a whole other universe. And God knows that. God judges the heart. The enemy persecutes us because we are fleshly and we know we're wicked and tells us that we don't deserve God. You know what? It's right. It's true, I don't deserve God. But because I love God, God has accepted me. And we look at these people that serve evil. 
how they've turned themselves over. And our job is to reach out to everybody we can so that people aren't turned to evil and so we don't lose them. But we're on a planet in space, folks. It's spiritual. It's interdimensional. It's real and you know it. What matters is you choose right for eternity. I really appreciate our listeners and our viewers. It's the greatest pleasure of my life to be associated with such souls. And like I said, five years ago, I got tears in my eyes once a year when I think of a dead grandparent. I get tears in my eyes every broadcast now when I think about the spirit of liberty that's rising. And these aren't tears of pain. These are tears of liberation. Because we've already climbed to mountains right to the edge of space. And we're staring now into heaven. That's a big deal. And the proximity to God is a proximity to wisdom. And when you stare into that wisdom, you stare into the eyes of God, there's no more fear. There's only a sadness for those you couldn't take with you. David Knight, take over, my friend. Yes, Alex, you know, when I, you're talking about this, and I've seen you do this multiple times, and of course, it's happened again in an even bigger way with this election. In the past, when there were these massive pushes for gun control, you would uh, go on these marathon uh, sessions, cut commercial breaks, and of course, we did that through the election this time. Uh, doing 50, I don't know, I guess it wound up, it was going to be 52 hours. It wound up being more like 60 hours that we had with uh, the staff, with you and everybody, because it was so important. And putting that first, and, and you know, the encouraging thing is, when we, when we fought against this, in the wake of uh, Sandy Hook and some of these other things, we just hoped to stop the progression against the, uh, the freedoms that we had. Uh, try to fight the new gun control measures, but we actually saw things move back in the other direction as people began to wake up to the importance of the Second Amendment, the importance of the nat natural rights that are enshrined in the Second Amendment. And so now when we look at this situation with Trump and we push this, I, I see some very positive things as Trump is moving into the governing mode. And I, I want to start out by saying the most positive thing I've seen in the last week or so is him settling this $25 million fraud case. When I heard that, I, I said to my wife as I went home uh, uh, on Friday, I said, you know, I, I think that's a real positive thing. I think he's a very smart manager to do that because the biggest problem is when you've got multiple businesses, multiple locations, I, I, I know this, uh, you, you want to always focus on the one that's not doing so well and ignore the ones that are really doing well. And so you get your attention focused on the non-performing stores or divisions of your business rather than just cutting them off and going with what's working. But it's even beyond that kind of business sense that we see Donald Trump doing. What he did was he really kicked in $25 million of his own money in order to govern, not to campaign for president. Think about that for a moment. OK, we've had situations where it's not unusual for somebody to kick in their own money if they got a lot of it in order to get an office. He's already got the office. And now what he's doing is he's taking a situation, which I really do believe. And this is what he tweeted out afterwards. The only bad thing about winning the presidency is that I don't have the time to go through a long but winning trial on Trump University. Too bad. And I think if he had lost, I think he would have defended his reputation. He would have fought that. But now that he's won. He's willing to throw in another $25 million so that he can govern, so that he won't be distracted uh, by this, even though he believes that he's justified. And I believe he's justified. I mean, look at the way the media completely ignored Laureate University with the Clintons. And that was something that not only with, with Trump University, people are saying, well, I, I went to this university and I don't like uh, what uh, the results that I got in terms of my career. I don't think that it helped me to get a job. Well, join the club. How many universities, including the Ivy League universities, the people pay big bucks in tuition and they get out and they don't have anything to show for it. They don't get a job. I mean, how many times have we seen people go to law school and then turn around and sue their university because it was worthless? You don't typically see that with liberal arts majors because they're not lawyers, but the lawyers do sue their own universities because of a worthless job. And we talk about it all the time, how worthless these uh, college degrees are. And, and so I think this is a very encouraging sign that he would put in $25 million more 
so that he can more effectively govern so he won't be distracted by this lawsuit, sacrificing that personal gain. Stay with us. We're going to talk about more of the transition team, the winners and the whiners. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and as we were just talking in the last segment, I think it's a, a big and important thing to notice what Donald Trump has done with this case with Trump University. Again, the double standard that was applied by the media, you never heard anything about LART University. It was magnitude, orders of magnitude larger than the Trump University case. The only thing involved in Trump University were some people who were disgruntled. You had some people said, hey, it was great. It worked for me. It, it helped me with my career. Other people said, nah, I thought it was worthless. You hear people say that about every university. They say that about LART University as well. But LART University was giving tens of millions of dollars to the Clintons personally, also the Clinton Foundation. And it wasn't simply about people not being happy with the university's content. It was also another case of influence peddling and against uh, fraud in a massive way, as we've seen uh, the Clintons operate. But I, I just want to think, before I, I get into this other news, think about if Hillary Clinton had won and she had a similar situation, okay, with Laura University. What do you think she would have done? Do you think she would have said, well, I'm just going to... Settle this with these people for more than I believe I owe them because I don't believe that there's, I, I believe I'm right, I believe they're wrong, but I'm going to go ahead and settle with them anyway because I need to get on with the governing of the country. No, I think what Hillary Clinton would have done, and you know it as well as I do, she would have come in and had a private conversation with these people and said, look, I'm president now. You better not mess with me or things might happen to you. Career-wise, safety-wise, okay? She would have strong-armed these people from a position of being president. Instead, Donald Trump pays it off and says, now I need to move on with the governing of the country. That, I think, is a key issue. And I think I was very happy to see that he did that and why he did that, uh, coming out and saying that. I was, I was thinking that was why he, he did it, but when he tweeted that out, it was, it was a great move on his part. Now, before we get back to the other news, I want to remind you that our new product, BioPCA, is part of our Black Friday specials, 25% off this new formulation, the ultimate new hair, skin, and nails formula. And again, it's going to be 25% off today at InfoWarsLife.com. 14 powerful ingredients, things like biotin, zinc, and a proprietary blend of enzymes and collagen. This is the real deal to help you fight the toxins in your environment. Not only what you eat and drink that is toxic, but also the soaps, the cosmetics, the other things that you put on your skin. You need something like biotin but also the other ingredients that work synergistically with that uh, to help your body to fight off the effects of toxins. Also, we have a new Brain Force Plus. It is not only qualitatively better, but quantitatively increased. We have a qualitatively, uh, we, it's a, a higher concentration formula, a new supercharger ingredient in it, black pepper extract, uh, plus a higher concentration formula of other key ingredients, and there are 20% more capsules per bottle. So you're not only getting a uh, more potent version of Brain Force, but you're also getting more tablets for the, uh, or capsules in this case, for the same price. Again, that is at InfoWarsLife.com. And we have still the loss leader, Trump is my president shirt, just $9.95. We're blowing those out. That's the red shirt that says Trump is my president. You can take a stand with Donald Trump even as the left whines about the results of the uh, election. And I've got a couple of uh, stories about that as well as uh, the people that are getting shunned by their families <laughs> because of their Facebook posts uh, in both directions. And so uh, we hope that that doesn't uh, get to that point. Uh, keep, the, keep the dialogue open so you can talk to people about these issues. And one last thing, InfoWars Prime app, that's our all new application that you can use on your phone that will keep you in touch with us, give you behind the scenes reports. You can look at each of the individual reporters, Alex Jones, I and all the other reporters have our own channels on there so you can uh, see the reports that we file there as well as all the other breaking news and events that are on InfoWars.com. And we have that now at a half price off introductory special. That's InfoWars Prime. Going back to the news now, this uh, article, and Alex Jones uh, did a, a great report on this, talking about this Hollywood Reporter article where they interviewed Steve Bannon. And we just can't say enough about what he did, slapping down this whole false narrative of him being a white nationalist. Anybody who knows Breitbart, who's watched it for a long time, knows that they're not about white nationalism. He said, yeah, I am a nationalist. I'm an economic nationalist. And I think it was very important to look at what he said about the election. This is uh, a lot of people on the left are looking at this and say, how did we miss this? 
And he said, well, you know, we, we told you this is going to be the case, and this is what happened. And he said, if we deliver, if Trump delivers on the promises of economic prosperity, he says, we're going to get 60% of the white vote, 40% of the black and Hispanic vote, and we'll govern for 50 years. And I think one of the key things that we need to understand is it's not just white, blue-collar workers. There's also black and Hispanic blue-collar workers, and it's black and Hispanic people of, and along with white, at every economic level that voted for Donald Trump. It was really the people who were awake in the white and black community that voted for him in greater numbers than they voted for previous Republican candidates. They really made a huge difference in this election, and we need to understand that, and I hope, and I expect, that Donald Trump is going to deliver and create economic opportunity for all of us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and in this segment, I want to look at uh, some of the reactions that we see from the people on the left. And I, I think there was a, a very good editorial that came out of uh, Lou Rockwell talking about the leftist love affair with Hamilton. I want to visit that briefly, but before I do, I want to go back to what uh, Steve Bannon was saying in terms of establishing a new political movement. He talks, he compares it to Andrew Jackson's populism. He says, we're going to do that. He says, if we deliver, we're going to have a new popular uh, political movement that is going to govern for 50 years. But there's a catch there that I think is very dangerous. And I, I agree with Steve Bannon and I agree with Donald Trump on these key issues. I think we have to be careful about some of the details. There's a huge detail the trillion dollar infrastructure plan. He said, I'm the guy pushing the infrastructure plan. And he makes a case that with negative interest rates uh, throughout the world, it's a great opportunity to build everything. The problem is that we have to be very careful when we do things that are unconstitutional. And I know it's been accepted for a long time that it is the it is within the realm of uh, legality for the federal government to build our infrastructure. I challenge that. I don't think that is true. I don't find that in the Constitution, except with an expansive uh, living document kind of reading of the of the uh, Constitution, you know, the uh, uh, the um, we the people, you know, we have the right to, to govern the fact that uh, uh, for the general welfare, welfare clause, that type of thing. No, that's not what that was about. To take a small phrase like that, a two word phrase, and expand that into things like a commerce department that we don't need. Uh, I'm hoping that some of these departments are going to be shut down. And we're going to talk about how Washington is actually freaking out about the fact that Trump has a plan for government workers and they're not going to like it. They're making moves now as to what they can do to not only do attrition, but perhaps to shut down departments. And I certainly hope that happens. When Reagan came in, the Department of Education had just been created by Jimmy Carter. It was less than four years old. He had an opportunity to kill it, but instead, he grew it. And we've talked about this many times. People need to understand that lost opportunity. We have another opportunity like that right now. We need to get some, rid of some of these departments, like the Commerce Department, like the Department of Education itself. It isn't any more constitutional now than it was when Jimmy Carter created it. The federal government should not be telling us how we're going to educate our children. But, of course, they insinuate themselves into our lives by printing up money in the Federal Reserve and then handing it out to us with strings attached. That's how they control our lives. And so we need to, that would be the greatest revolution of all. The thing I'm concerned about is this trillion-dollar infrastructure. When we go back and look at the no-bid Halliburton contracts in Iraq that happened. There was just an article that came out last week. $85 million for infrastructure in Afghanistan. Where did the money go? Nothing was ever built. We've seen this happen over and over again. The bridge to nowhere in Alaska. Here in Texas, we have a Spanish company came in and did a toll road, and now they're bankrupt. They're trying to do the same thing in North Carolina. They're trying to do the same thing again in Texas with a Japanese company trying to build a high-speed rail between Dallas and Houston. And, of course, that involves eminent domain by a foreign corporation on not a single path but on multiple possible paths. They want to take people's property, give the power to this foreign corporation to take people's property on multiple paths. That's the downside of handing this over in a public-private partnership that they talked about, creating toll roads that nobody wants. So that right there could kill the legacy that I hope they do create. I hope they do build a new governing coalition for 50 years. But if they get involved in crony capitalism, if they put a trillion dollars in Washington to be handed out, I don't think that they can do it 
and not get involved in crony capitalism and corruption. You are inviting corruption. It's a very dangerous thing to put that money at the center. It's the wrong thing to do it from a pragmatic standpoint. These decisions need to be made by the people in the communities where they're going to borrow the money and spend it. We could borrow the money with negative interest rates very cheaply at the state and local level to do these kind of projects. We should determine that. We should determine how much we want to do of it instead of letting that be done by Washington. They're not smarter in Washington. They're just more corrupt. And when we talk about campaign finance reform, the liberals always want to attack this from the wrong end. They always want to put limitations on people's spending to limit their free speech during a political campaign. But the problem is, when you put things like a trillion dollar infrastructure in Washington, then that puts money and power there that is going to invite corruption. It is like a black hole for the worst elements of society and multinational corporations to come in and grab that money, grab that power in Washington. That, I think, is a very dangerous thing that we have to guard against. But I think it's very interesting when he talks about his vision. Uh, the last thing that uh, Steve Bannon says in this article, he says, uh, I am, he says with relish, Thomas Cromwell and the court of the Tudors. And, of course, he's talking about the English Reformation. And I think that's a very interesting way for him to look at this. And I, I really do wish them well. I think he's a thinker. If he's looking at this, he understands how significant that was. Because it wasn't just a reformation from a religious standpoint. It was a reformation from a political standpoint. And I think Cromwell was really more involved in the politics of it than he was the uh, religious aspects of it. When they broke with the Pope, what they were doing was breaking with a worldwide system of government. They were breaking with the globalists. England went its own way. And that's, by the way, one of the reasons why uh, you saw so many people being executed by one side or the other during those times, the Christians, because there was a heavy political side to it. Not just a religious side, but a heavy political side to it. And that's one of the reasons why the founders of this country said we want to separate religion from politics. And that's the danger of Islam, is that they do not recognize that separation. Everything about Islam, taken literally, says that they need to have Sharia law, which is a firm establishment of that religious order. We'll talk more about this in just a moment in terms of uh, what we're seeing now still, the army telling a, band, a small band that they can't perform on a radio station. They don't understand the difference between the exercise, the free exercise of religion that is protected. It's a uh, human, fundamental human right, and it is recognized in our Constitution to be protected. They don't understand the difference between the free exercise of religion and the establishment of religion. Just because somebody at a school or somebody that belongs to a government organization like the army is exercising their right of religion or participating in some way with it, that's not wrong. That's not the same as establishment of religion. We've been sold that lie for a long time. And uh, I'm going to talk about that more in detail on the nightly news uh, for, the, for the holidays as we come in. Because I think this is a good time for us to think about the First Amendment, why this country was established. Religious freedom had a lot to do with it. And it's the left that's trying to take religious freedom away from us. But I want to take a look at this uh, story from the Washington Post. They're wringing their hands, talking about how Trump may be taking away some of Washington workers' privileges. You understand, you talk about white privilege all you want, but there's nobody more privileged than federal workers. In this article right here, they say Trump has a plan for government, government workers, and they're not going to like it. Well, you know what this election was about, Washington Post, was the rest of us didn't like the plan that you had for the rest of us who weren't government workers. <laughs> we didn't like that. You took away our job security. You took away everything that you demand that you have. Uh, and the workers understand they've been betrayed by both the government and, in most cases, the unions who are allied with the government. Here's what they have to say. They say Trump and the Republican-controlled Congress are drawing up plans to take on the government bureaucracy they have long railed against by eroding job protections and grinding down benefits for federal workers that they've received for a generation. See, that's the federal workers' privilege. And I understand that they would like to have uh, job protections. They would like to have automatic raises. All of us would. But the reality is that uh, that's not America today. And the people who are the most to blame for that 
are the people in Washington, and they should share with this rebuilding. It says hiring freezes, an end to automatic raises, a green light to fire poor performers, a ban on union businesses on the government's dime, and less generous pensions. The same kind of stuff that the rest of us in America have had to see because of your policies. So hiring freezes, an end to automatic raises. Gee, what a, what a difficult time for the workers in Washington. They say these changes were once unthinkable to federal employees, to their unions, to their supporters in Congress. But Trump's election as an outsider promises to shake up a system he told voters as a wash in wa waste, fraud, and abuse. And we know that it is. And they refer to this article that was on Breitbart as also on the Drudge Report. The number of government employees now surpasses manufacturing jobs by 10 million. And even more important, when I covered this article for the Nightly News, was the fact that they were adding government workers at twice the rate that we were losing manufacturing jobs. So in other words, a thousand manufacturing jobs being lost in a given period and then adding 2,000 government jobs. What are they manufacturing? They're manufacturing rules, regulations. They are manufacturing fines, okay? What are these government workers, these you know, that exceed manufacturing jobs by 10 million. What do they manufacture? They manufacture chains. Remember the Declaration of Independence, where Thomas Jefferson said they have created, uh, the king has created swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. That's exactly what we have seen here in Washington. And if you look at Thomas Jefferson's second inaugural address after he got reelected, he looked back on his first term and he said, we have eliminated useless offices. And by doing so, we've been able to cut and eliminate all internal taxes so that laborers and farmers and mechanics can all say, what tax man? We don't, we don't know a tax man. Think about that. That was essentially the way the United States was governed until they created the income tax. Along with the income tax and the Federal Reserve, what they did was they changed our tax structure so that we no longer taxed goods that were coming into our country. Instead, those came in for free. And what we did was we taxed everybody internally. It was an inversion of what the Declaration of Independence was about. It was an inversion of what Thomas Jefferson had said. And so what we have here is a situation where we have a privileged class that believes that they can import uh, workers and they can export jobs. They can burden us with every kind of regulation. They can harass us out of existence. And yet they believe that they should still be able to continue to grow at an exponential rate. No hiring freezes and get automatic raises and so forth and so on. No, that's going to change. And it's a good sign to see the Washington Post and the head of the National Federation of Federal Employees wringing their hands saying we're going to be playing defense for at least a couple of years. And this guy who's head of the third largest federal union says the most immediate worry is how are we going to shrink government? Are we going to lay people off? Or are we going to eliminate whole agencies? Or are we going to do it through attrition? I would say all of the above. <laughs> Let's do all of the above. Let's do all of that. Uh, we haven't had a federal agency eliminated since uh, the beginning of the Reagan administration. And um, we had um, one individual, I'm, I can't remember his name right now, Howard, Howard Phillips, Howard Phillips, who created the Taxpayer Party. He actually shut down the bureaucracy that he was put in charge of. <laughs> we need more people like that. We need more people to do that. They point out Trump has promised that in his first 100 days in office, he will freeze hiring by not replacing employees who leave. Military and employees in public health and safety roles would be exempt, according to the president-elect's contract with the American voters. So let's hope that that happens. Also, we see that even Paul Ryan is now talking again about Obamacare. Remember, he got elected time and time again, saying that he was going to take care of the borders, he was going to take care of Obamacare. And now <laughs> they come out and say, uh, well, look, uh, Paul Ryan has got a blueprint for how to repeal Obamacare, as if Donald Trump didn't. I mean, Donald Trump has had this plan, as I pointed out, probably 15 or 16 months is one of the first things he did. Uh, he did it shortly after he did the immigration plan. He did a very detailed plan for a... Uh, candidate. Most candidates only talk in the most general uh, ideas about what they're going to do. But Donald Trump had like a 10-point plan 
wasn't exactly 10 points. Uh, it was seven. There you go. Because, you know, you do a 10 point plan. A lot of times that's kind of phony. He did a seven point plan. Basically what he did, he talked about, uh, getting rid of the mandate, modifying existing laws that inhibit the sale of health insurance across state lines. In other words, get rid of the mandate, create competition and a marketplace. He also talked about letting people fully deduct their health insurance from their tax returns. Why wouldn't we be able to do that? If health, in health insurance and health care is so important, why wouldn't the government let us pay for that ourselves before we send them the money and they hand it back to us as a subsidy like we're children on allowance? That's the first thing they ought to do. But he talked about uh, letting us deduct health insurance premiums from our tax returns, letting us set up health savings accounts, and then having price information from the health care provider so we can actually shop. See, what he's talking about is setting up the tools that you need to operate in a marketplace. You need the ability to pay. You need to have something to buy with. And for some people, well, we're going to have to do something to help them with that. But basically, you need to have a marketplace and not the phony marketplace like Obama created. You have to have choice, not coercion, not mandates, okay? Marketplaces. And that means that you're going to be able to shop around. You'll be able to shop across state lines. Isn't it interesting? These people who constantly talk about free trade, did not want to have free trade on health care within the United States. So that's what I was talking about as they changed from a system where we taxed goods and services coming into the country uh, to internal income taxes. So there's no freedom inside the United States, just the opposite of what the founders tried to do. So I hope that Paul Ryan is serious about this. I hope he gets on with the uh, Trump plan. We still have the mainstream media trying to pretend that they don't know what is in the Trump plan or that Donald Trump even has a plan. Uh, but he does have a plan. Just as uh, we now see that Paul Ryan is coming on, he's saying some of the right stuff. He's saying, don't force people to buy insurance. He told the crowd that he's talking to. He said, make insurance companies compete for our business. And yes, we're going to help you to buy insurance. Give us some deductions. Uh, give us credit on our taxes. Uh, help us to uh, let us set up savings accounts to pay for our health insurance. And as one person who's with a um, conservative think tank, uh, his name is Howard. He's with the Manhattan Institute. He said this. He said, do you know that $20,000 of your wages are going every year to insurance? Would you rather have $10,000 in your pocket Put $5,000 into a high deductible plan or something like that, and then put some aside for a rainy day that will accumulate over time? Can we make those kinds of decisions ourselves? Or do we have to have somebody who is smarter than us making those decisions? See, they're not smarter than us. They would put these mandates on us and then laugh about how stupid we were for letting them do it. That's what we've seen from the people who pushed Obamacare through. So I hope that Paul Ryan is going to be sincere on this. As uh, Donald Trump was talking about term limits, Paul Ryan was saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I've long been a supporter of term limits. <laughs> uh, we've never seen any legislation from Paul Ryan on term limits. He just got elected for the 10th time. So uh, you could lead on that if you wanted to, Paul. Uh, you could uh, say, I'm, this is my last time in. I'm going to make it count. Now, real quickly, I want to take a look at there's been a lot of talk this whole weekend about this Hamilton thing. And I think one aspect of this is being missed. Besides the fact that uh, Pence paid $1,700 to go this stupid thing. And besides the fact that uh, these people lectured him on diversity, even though they're the ones who put out uh, the casting call that said no whites need to apply to play the founding fathers. They lecture us on diversity. The other part of this is the fact that Hamilton was the most statist of all the founders. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and I want to go through some of the winners after the election. And I would include on this some Democrats. We're going to see some whiners on that side, but there's some Democrats who are looking better with the things that they're saying here. Before we do, real quickly, just want to remind you that we have a special on our Lost Leader t-shirt, Trump is My President. We've taken that down to just $9.95. We also have at InfoWarsLife.com, all new Brain Force Plus. Not only has 20 percent more capsules per bottle, but it is also supercharged with a new ingredient, black pepper extract. So it's also it's more potent and there are more pills in it, 20% uh, more pills. And that is a new formulation at InfoWarsLife.com. And we also have a special 
on BioPCA. That's our brand new uh, biotin and other ingredients. Uh, BioPCA to help your skin, hair, and nails uh, to fight the toxic uh, environment that you have, not only internally, but the uh, toxic chemicals that you put on your skin and hair uh, with soap and shampoos, that type of thing. That's 25% off as part of our Black Friday special. Brand new product, 25% off as part of our Black Friday special. All that at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, as we went to the break, I was talking about this uh, editorial that's on LewRockwell.com by Thomas DiLorenzo. And he says, yeah, Gary North looked at this and said, you know, Mike Pence got what he deserved when he paid $1,700 to go there and be lectured by these people who are <laughs> who based this, who've done a play about the most statist of the founding fathers, uh, did it by excluding all white people, except for the king, who's the villain. Okay, no other white people need apply. But he goes on to talk about Alexander Hamilton, and we should understand that he is not somebody we should admire. This is what De Lorenzo said. He said, Hamilton was a founding father of corrupt crony capitalism. He was funded by a crooked central bank exclusively for the benefit of the one percenters of his day. He stood for everything the Trump campaign stood against. Hamilton was a consummate statist, an imperialist, a political water boy for big business interests of New York, Philadelphia, and Boston. In other words, the Federalists of the time, who wanted to essentially establish the rotten, corrupt, imperialist, Brit British mercantilist system in America. And of course, it was the multinational capitalism, the globalist elite of its day. Okay, He also was a founding father who denounced the Constitution as a frail and worthless fabric. Why? Because it imposed limits on governmental power. Of course, that would be the person that the left would celebrate. And of course, they would do it in the most racist way possible. And you've got people like Howard Dean, who is now campaigning to become the new DNC chair, calling not only Donald Trump, but now Stephen Bannon a, Nats, a Nazi. Okay, so you keep seeing this over and over again. Meanwhile, Bernie Sanders has this to say. He said Democrats must move beyond the identity politics that they've been playing. He said this yesterday on one of the Sunday shows. He said the Democrats must move beyond identity politics to connect with a larger share of the voting public. He said it's not good enough to say to someone, I'm a woman, vote for me. It's not good enough. And of course, that's what Hillary was all about. Remember, we looked at the Newsweek commemorative edition. It was Madam President, not President Clinton, but Madam President. And all they had to say in there was, uh, she's a woman, and Donald Trump and anybody who opposes her is a misogynist. On and on and on. He said, however, this is Bernie Sanders talking. He said, what we need is a woman who has the guts to stand up to Wall Street and insurance companies, et cetera. Yeah, we've seen that with Margaret Thatcher. You know, conservatives cheered Margaret Thatcher. Why? Because she had a spine? Because she was right on the issues. Hillary Clinton had none of those. <laughs> she didn't have a spine. She couldn't even stand up uh, without somebody lifting her up physically on her own uh, for very long. They say He said the working class of this country is being decimated, and that's why Donald Trump won. This is Bernie Sanders again. He said what we need now are real candidates to stand with working people who understand that real median family income has gone down. And we need to understand why that is. We need to understand that the socialism that Sanders has uh, endorsed is a big part of that. But he's, ta he's rejecting the identity politics. He says, I come from white working class. I'm deeply humiliated. The Democrat Party can't talk to people where Bernie Sanders came from. That's right. Join us tonight for the InfoWars Nightly News. I'll be hosting.